All right, guys, welcome to the MHP <clears throat> Value Show, or technically this isn't even MHP Value Show, honestly. We are just doing a podcast. I have two special guests visiting me here in Tampa, Florida this weekend. One of them, reoccurring guest of the show, Spencer. Hey. A wholesaler, up, mobile home park biz, single family biz also now, yep. and also mobile home park operator. And then we have a really special guest, Jimmy Johnson, Sand Dollar Communities. He's probably one of the most successful younger operators in the space, not even 30 years old, has over 2,000 units and has been in the game probably two to three years longer than even us. So thank you for coming to the show. Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, we are in my office in Tampa having some cigars, just kicking it because we're going to have a night, good dinner. Oh, yeah. Um, hear a little bit about Jimmy's story. And honestly, guys, we just <clears throat> shoot the shit. I don't really have a uh, solid structure or anything. I'm going to get lit up, though, really quick. How was the, uh, how was the drive down, guys? It was good. Yeah, we talked parks, took a couple, couple park calls. Um, no sellers, but we had some buyers and some tenants. And, uh, yeah, no, we're happy to be here Friday night. And uh, it's a good start to the weekend. Yeah, one thing I'd say, I knew you guys would take calls. <laughs> on the drive because Spencer, even when we were meeting up, he's like, dude, we should start ripping some cold calls together right yeah. now. And I'm like, yo, yeah. it's like 7 p.m. I'm trying to chill the fuck out. <laughs> Spencer's like, let's rip some cold calls, see if we can learn off each other. I'm like, all right, next time. I could one up it with, we'll turn the phone off, vibrate, and we'll take some time and calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee one's ringing in yeah. shit. <laughs> so yeah. with 2,000-plus uh, with tenants, how many mm -hmm. exactly actually are you up to? It's 2,443. Okay, and how many parks is that between? Uh, 57. Okay. And for those of you that are listening, what's another thing that's special about Jimmy is aside from having a mass amount of units, unlike the conventional wisdom where people try and buy 100 plus unit communities, you mm -hmm. have no issue taking on smaller communities too, yep. in addition to having large ones also, yep. especially being more established now. But yep. it's interesting you're able to operate from afar so many different communities, so many different tenants. But yeah, is your phone just ringing off the hook? It's nonstop. Yeah. And we have like the software set up to do like a round robin thing. So if like you guys are the team, it rings me if I don't answer, then it rings Spencer. If he doesn't answer, it rings you. So we have it set up pretty good, yeah. but everything is like we need it right now. Yeah. Everything's an emergency. Yeah. Truly nothing is like they're going to leave a message, call back. It's they need it right now. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think that's tough. And we're always trying to like balance how to kind of service everything is like an immediacy. Yeah. Like nobody wants to be second or third in line. They're yeah. like, hey, solve like my problem right now. Yeah. So that's tough. And then, yeah, they're all over. So yeah. we're in, um, I think, over 20 states now. Um, and yeah, we have handful. from six sites um, to uh, six to 150 and everything yeah. in between. So our average is about 30, 35 sites. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the bulk of them are uh, in the teens, 20s, 40s, a um, couple bigger ones over 100. But uh, I would say yeah, the bread and butter is the 20, 30 ciders. So. Wow. And then um, you're living in Port Ritchie, Florida now, right? Uh, yeah, Newport Ritchie. Newport Ritchie. Yeah. Okay. And then Spencer, you came from Panama City? That's right. From Panama City. Now How six far? Hour, six hour drive. Six <laughs> hours just to get to Newport Ritchie and then, yeah. and then the extra hour and yeah, a half. Yeah, five and a half. With okay. Six was Pits, Pittsburgh. Too. Cool. Mm -hmm. And how's, how's biz been for you? It's good, man. Just trying to wrap up some, you know, loose ends on the MHP side. Yeah. Um, you know, had a bunch of deals there kind of in queue, just needing to push across the finish line. And, you know, Jimmy and I are going through one this week that, nice. again, just chaotic <clears throat> at the end. Oh, yeah. Is it a large one? How big? No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a six sider. Oh, <laughs> six sides. Wow, dude, you guys are killing it. Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> Time to retire. It's direct fill. The yeah. roads are freshly paved. It's, uh, it's a good one. I'm, yeah. I'm losing money on this one. Um, <laughs> no. It's, um, a, it's a good six units, though. I mean, great. It was six units worth working on, it's sort six of. Six quality units. Yeah, yeah. infrastructure's <laughs> great. You know, it's just. You know how these things can go. I mean, it's it's just it does. It's hard to pencil it. It's yeah. hard to make sense of it. I mean, seller six units, guys. We're, we're trying to impress the audience. Not to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't get in this fucking bit. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my hair. No. Um, yeah. No. I mean, it, but but I think it's important for the audience to know that too. Like, if you're going to get in this business, I mean, it's it's so many curveballs. I mean, and obviously, hmm. you know. I'm just on the acquisition side and the wholesaling side, so I don't really see the back end of it, right? When I close yeah. a deal, it's, I'm done. I don't have to deal with any of the tenant turnover. I don't have to deal with any of the, the shit that Jimmy has to deal with, which yeah. is, I don't even understand, um, nor do I want to deal with. So that's why I'm going to stay in my lane. 
But even just getting the deals across the finish line sometimes. I mean, this seller walked. Yeah. And I don't know when this is going to air, so mm -hmm. hopefully a couple weeks after this closes. Yeah. But the seller <clears throat> walked at closing day. He, ah, classic. He yeah. said, I'm not signing this shit. Yeah. It's not what we agreed to. Yeah. What the fuck do we, what are we talking about? Like, yeah. it's mm -hmm. been three, four months of our lives that we've been negotiating this deal, working on this deal, and he walks. Yeah. You know, to then figuring it out and coming up with a solution over the net last three days where today I finally got an email. It's like, okay, we can get this done. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a lot of that. Um, what is the, I mean, for the, the people listening, just to be clear. So this is a wholesale deal you guys were doing. You had it under contract. You ended up connecting with Jimmy. Jimmy mm -hmm. had a buyer. Or what was the, what's the roles from both of you guys? In the Even game? that's changed a lot because it was going to be like an equity deal with a guy I've done a bunch with. Okay. Then he came into some health issues. Yeah. So he's like, I have a family member who's going to buy it. So it's been all over. Uh, so you're kind of like swapping hands. Who's the mm. real buyer? Kind of. Yeah. So mess. we're going to get it done at 99%, I would say, at this yeah. point. And uh, yeah, uh, Sand Dollar is going to manage it. Um, okay. We have a bunch of stuff. It's like in between. We have two parks 20 minutes to the west, uh, a big park like 45 minutes to the east. So it kind of just fits right on. Yeah. And yeah, like people kind of knock the small ones, but one of our best ever return deals is a different six sider that we've um, did years ago. And the expenses on that, um, everything's direct build. Yeah. It's just, it's so solid on paper. The property taxes are like under a grand a year. The insurance is like 250 and that's a the tenants pay all their utilities. Yeah. We have a little road that is maybe 30, 40 yards long. I mean, maybe some gravel once every couple of years. But yeah. Uh, yeah, this thing truly has under under 1000 under yeah. 1500 bucks of uh, of expenses a year. So yeah. like, what else are you going to see that? You're not going to see that in like a six uh, unit apartment building. Yeah. Or six single family homes. Yeah, especially at being in Florida, high growth area. And, and yeah. And this thing just longer. cranks. The rents are 400 there. Oh, so it's wow. Like, yeah. So you got two, 300 bucks. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of the small ones have been great. Yeah. Um, my bus deal that I ever wholesaled, the the guy bought it. It's a three sider in yeah. North Carolina, 100 percent direct build sides. everything. Hell yeah! And um, yeah, he bought it. It was like year one. I think I did it for 29k. I had the price, and I didn't have the money at the time. So he bought it. He paid me 1500 bucks on the fee, and right. I was happy as can be. Like, hey, kind of pad the stats, get a deal done. Yeah. He sold one of the POHs for 24 that first week. Wow. So he's in a three-sider for like five grand, and yeah. there he's getting 300 lot run. Yeah. So he's like, I make 900 bucks a month, clear. He's like, I have parks quadruple the size. Yeah. I have like houses, everything. He's like jack of all trades guy. He's like, this makes more yeah. than like all, a, a all bunch of other stuff. He just bought a three-unit chip Yeah, box. he's like, I have a yeah. triplex that like I'm busting my ass over, yeah. and this little thing makes more. Yeah. He's in it for five grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, don't pass up the, the little ones. Is, yeah. uh, I think. Well, and, yeah, I to totally agree. I mean, I think in what you're, what I see a lot, you know, especially on social media and with a lot of people that are maybe watching this that want to get into the investment space is, you know, oh, I own 2,000 unit portfolio. I own a 3,000 unit portfolio. Mm -hmm. I, own, I, own, I own 1,000 units or I own 500 units, but it's like a three, four percent position in those yeah. units rather yep. than maybe going out and getting your own 20 cider where yeah. you're probably going to be a little bit more positive cash flow. You have a lot more control over the deal. And I think that's, you know, something that I'm more interested in personally is, is something like that where I have, <clears> you know, it might be a, not look as sexy on paper, you mm -hmm. know, I don't have as many units, but I have more control and, you know, can handle yeah, it. Yeah, that, that like goes into kind of like a lot of people don't realize when when especially younger guys not mm -mm. not in your situation you have a mm -mm. by the way guys jimmy has a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> off the record <laughs> but like so most of your newer syndicators what a lot of people don't realize like a lot of the commercial guys like hey i own 200 units i own 500 units and they just got into the game a lot of the ways that that works is the way they structure it is usually they have to pay their investor whatever preferred return and then they're going to take they're going to do a split let's say 70 percent to the investor 30 percent to them as the gp and it's 30% of the upside of the deal. Mm -hmm. So when you look at something that's like, let's say a 1 million, I think it makes sense at the high levels when you're mm -hmm. doing five, $10 million mm -hmm. deals, yep. it makes sense to get a 20% equity yep. position on the upside because that's a lot of money. But if it's like a $1 million deal, you're gonna only capture 30% of the upside. It's gonna take you two to three years to get it to a $2 million deal. Well, 30% yep. of the upside, just quick math, a million dollar profit upside, mm -hmm. you get 300 grand for that. 300 grand for three, four, five years of work. Really, yeah. it's kind of like, should you have just taken a 50, 75, $100,000 brokerage or assignment fee mm -hmm. rather than buying that deal? Now, granted, there's other benefits to taxes. sucking it up. Taxes, yeah. now you have track record. You could probably raise money at way better terms later on. You could sign for your own recourse debt at that point. There's a lot of mm -hmm. benefits to not making money on the deal and just mm -hmm. really trying to be on the ownership side. But for like some situations, this is actually something I want to debate with the three of us. Yeah. And I know which we, we lean on the 
not buy side, but you're definitely on the buy side, but you also do have, I would guess you have probably more higher net worth and or more money than both of us. So, so he wins the debate then. Yeah, he wins the debate. <laughs> no, but there's, but there's like a, there's definitely a cost benefit analysis that has to go down because it's for like sure. the cost of liquidity, like you sacrifice liquidity hmm. for equity, but sometimes depending on your stage of life, liquidity is yep. more important than equity on paper because 100%. you want to be more mobile, let's say starting new businesses or scaling a team and shit like yep. that. So we'll go into that. But yeah. Just to close off the topic on this little six unit thinker you guys <laughs> <Right>. got. <laughs> what uh, how, how what's the total transaction size? So well, it was three hundred K. Okay. Hundred K down, seller financing. Great terms. What's that? The, the terms were great. Yeah, term, yeah. term. Oh yeah, fifty a site with seller finance. That's good. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, it's a ten sider. There's, so there's ten spaces there. Yeah, six mm-hmm. occupants. Like, you know, utilities, everything. Yeah. I mean, clean park, like Jimmy says. Clean yeah, park. Yeah, so thirty a site in Florida. Yeah, and Panama you know, City? I mean, it's no, it's Sneeds. Okay, what's that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like as if he's gonna know. <laughs> yeah. Sneeds, my uh, favorite it's, town. Um, it's a suburb of uh, Tallahassee. Okay, so, yeah, right. yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Yeah. again, it's um, you know, smaller community, but you know, you have beach as well as Tallahassee that yeah. probably employees can go. So not not bad, and maybe yeah. retirement area. I don't know. Okay, but um, yeah. So I mean, we got it for three hundred k, hundred k down. Um, you know, decent seller financing terms. And so we're just cruising along. And one of the things that I'm learning in the wholesale acquisition space, when a seller says, let me get my attorney involved. Yep. Okay, my contracts are written in third grade English. Yeah. For me to understand, not the seller. Now I'm trying trying to disrespect the seller, but it's pretty clearly spelled out. Yeah. And so when an attorney needs to draft a contract, as a wholesaler, I'm saying, Mm -hmm. speaking as a wholesaler. Yeah. Red flag. See, now, now this is funny. Now, with the, from the brokerage standpoint, now, that would probably be my thesis for, like, a sub-15 unit park, but I actually hate when a seller doesn't have an attorney. Now, I do hate when there's an attorney that doesn't know what he's doing. That, that's the worst. Because you have them doing changes to something that's very yeah, standard bro, in a contract. I just like, had an attorney like if, on a deal. Like, if they try and strike out a due diligence period, it's like... It's like yeah, come, which is common. Well, yeah. I mean, why do we get all the time? Why, yeah. why do I get, okay, so you got to put it in fucking Harvard language for a six-site deal? Right. They got to rack. They got to rack their hourly, bro. That's let what them, I'm saying. Let them make money too. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And, and they always think the park is like worth triple of yeah. what it is, yeah. Yeah. and that's why I hate doing deals like around the holidays because I'm yeah. like, man, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, they're gonna sit down. Oh, what's going on with the park? Yeah, Uncle Bruce. Yeah. Oh, I'm selling it. What do you mean? It's worth three million, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, and meanwhile it's worth like six hundred. Yeah. Now they're reneging on what they already right. agreed yeah. to, and and, yeah. and the whole time, you know, during the negotiation process, you can hear the attorney on uh, in the in the room or on speaker with yeah. us. In, in his ear. Just complicating the deal. And it's like, yeah. and I literally had the conversation today. I was like, Tom, you're 89 years old. You have no children. And we want to close this. And we, we want to close get it done. this. He's 89 in seller financing. How long of a term? Well, uh, we, we reverted back. It was a three-year balloon. Three no, it just okay. cash. Right. Yeah, now it's just oh, cash. Oh, okay. That's cash. better for him, though. It's yeah, a win-win. Yeah. Ex- exactly. And, and we kind of did re- feel bad because yeah. we want to close it. Like, yeah. we're not, we never retraded. We want to get it done. Yeah. And it really was the attorney. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Turning out in the way, yeah. and it's because, you know, again, I don't know why, maybe he got in his ear saying, oh, you know, you could probably get more for it or this or that, but again, yeah. he's just racking up fees, and, and uh, you know, again, it just, it, just got, it just got hairy, and I wasn't mm-hmm. sure if we were, I was like, he's walked, I don't know what we're going to do, let him sleep on it, call him, tw- you know, the next day, and another key for wholesalers, like, get on the phone with these people, you know, yeah. you, you know especially you younger wholesalers, you're not going to text your way through a deal, yeah. like, you know, you got to eventually hop on a, have a phone it'd be, it'd, it'd be so much more efficient if we could. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I, let me I, let me send a carrier pigeon to Tom. <laughs> He's eighty nine. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, and so, anyways, you know, you just got to have those tough conversations and able to work it out. And now it's a cash deal and a little bit of a discount for that for that cash, you know. Yeah. Up, and you know, we'll close next week. But you know, again, with the attorney thing, I agree. But it was hilarious. I'm actually doing another deal right now. So I was like, oh, man, my my attorney draft this contract. And I'm like, oh, here we fucking go. Yeah. I'm waiting for this freaking you know twenty page. Harvard document. It was the Florida realtor contract. And you I said, you see that a lot. Too. I said, you're yeah. paying your attorney to, to literally to fill out a fill, template. fill yeah. in text mm. templates. Yeah. I could have done this in five and, minutes yeah. and charged you half. No, you need contracts done. Dude, no. you, guys are, you guys are too funny. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's like, come gotta on. make that money, baby. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just like, for real, it's like, what are we doing on, on this deal? If you don't mind me asking, what's like the, the fee you guys are taking? Man, you're you're asking the hard questions. That, that's the questions that you don't want to answer on the podcast. We're uh, 
but six grand. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. I thought you guys were doing like a 50 banger together. No, no. So oh, it, it was. It's just been all over the yeah. board. You, we're going to have to edit this part out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's so so originally Jesus 35. Christ. Yeah. Originally 35. Yeah. You know, as it goes on, goes on, goes on. And look, six, six grand each, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> We're really doing it. The buyer really wants it. Yeah. The seller really wants to sell. Yeah. At this point, we we're even saying like on the car right here, like I want to get to hundred parks. Yeah, yeah. I'm at ninety uh ninety two yeah. right now. And I'm by like, the way, I'm just talking shit. Yeah. Like, no, I'm no, like, this is just, I've done tiny feast too, trust me. <laughs> we're like, let's just pad the stats. Yeah. This yeah, is this like, is this yeah. is this is fourth quarter, we're up by thirty. You know, You're missing I, on purpose to get a rebound. I, I've yeah. got I've got 48 <laughs> points. I want 50. Yeah. You know, on the board. Like let's let's keep me in, coach. Like yeah. let me get the stats up. And so that's exactly what this is. And again, at the end of the day, you have big ones, you have small ones. It, it's it's not going to hurt us as far as like yep. Jimmy says. He's getting closer to 100. This will be double digits for me in my first year of that's parks awesome. and units and things yeah. like that. I can add up. So it's like it, it's a win. I can post about it. I can talk about it and. You know, yeah. Will I get more on a residential deal with a lot less headache? Sure, but you know, it's it's just learning lessons and no, hundred percent. We'll, we'll throw it on black yeah, tonight and call it a day. Yeah. 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 Honestly, six to twelve. Honestly, <laughs> dude, I mean, yeah, if it's, a ch- if it's a check under fifteen, you might as well just let them keep. See, it if we were to close, if we were to close this week, <laughs> yeah, close this week. We did say we were going to do it. Really? Well, that was if we closed. Oh, and dude, I had the that'd check. be that'd be hilarious to do on the vlog if you just cash the actual check and just throw well, it. Well, I did the cardinal sin of cash, and you know, before it closed, I've yeah. got my two grand in my back pocket <laughs> right now. <laughs> I've cut my words at the casino. It's all right though. We're gonna win it though, so it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, when your kid is born, mm. you will make different decisions. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a month and a half more. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So still, when, when, still... when you hit the hundred, when you hit the hundred, uh, you know, relay text, I was like, ah, "Fuck, honey." Um, <laughs> Couple hundred dollars might miss the yeah. account this weekend. <laughs> yeah. No, no kids is nice, man. You don't want to see how much I blow. <laughs> you want you want four? <laughs> yeah, no, no, trust me, I do, I do not. Not yet, not yet, not right. yet. One day. I want, uh, I want I want twenty now. Like yeah. I, I like once you have it, it's like I want. That's, that's what everybody's good. been telling me. This yeah. leg, it's your only legacy. But I feel like it's twenty really twenty it. would be cool if you have the funds to support it. Like I remember seeing at. Like, I was walking through Disney once, and mm. there's, like, you know, like, a family who's got, like, seven kids. They all got, like, the matching shirts on, the mom, everyone. Yep. You have to think, like, for that guy to just go to dinner. 20. Yeah. Oh, for Disney, I meant 20K. Oh, no, 20, Disney yeah. 20K. Yeah, you got to get the resort, the well, whole line. But, Spencer uh, having a call on at home. So yeah. they're all, he's going to have a little call center, call, 20 yeah, kids. Yeah, that's why he wants 20. He wants a boiler room. <laughs> 100%. It's already mapped out. Yeah, Duke's yeah. going to be hitting the phones at 10. Oh, 100%. By 16, right. yeah. I'll be running acquisitions. At 18, I'll be in fucking on yeah. a boat in the Mediterranean. Yeah. The AC yeah. comes on after our first lead of the day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are hilarious. That's right. <laughs> the, the, um, all right, so the switch topics from the uh, the grand deal that we were talking about. <laughs> Thank God that's over. So, for the, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the viewers out there, what I always wanted to know mm-hmm. from... Just personally wanted to know, aside from, I know a lot of people would like to hear your story because I think why a lot of people resonate with Spencer's story before or mine was that we're just younger guys making good money in the industry. But where did you start off originally from to eventually get to the point of having 2,000 units? So major points I want you to touch on is one is, mm-hmm. what is just your beginning story getting into the industry or real estate in general? Yep. From real estate, how did <clears> you start doing your first deals, a.k.a. <clears throat> was it wholesale, wholesale, build up your own money, <clears throat> or did you raise money? And if, <clears throat> if you raised money for the first one you bought, yep. how'd that look? And then at a certain point, you hit the, <clears throat> hey, we're in scale <clears throat> mode. Yep. It's time to outsource. That Call that stage three. Yep. Kind of detail out, like, what was your rise? In yeah, the yeah, no, three great questions. And yeah, uh, yeah so I started, uh, I was in college, moved okay. from Chicago down here to Florida, and uh, was playing soccer. And, uh, yeah, couldn't have, like, a real job. So, uh uh, good or bad idea, I hit Craigslist looking nice. for work. Nice. <laughs> Saw some questionable stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my first ever real estate job, I lived in Lakeland at the time, okay. and uh, it was $100 to go take pictures of like a Longhorn Steakhouse. Okay. And uh, I really had no idea. I'm like, yeah. maybe this is like a guy who wants to, to go there. I didn't even know anything about real yeah, estate. Yeah. So I did it. He paid me. And I'm like, okay. But I didn't know what was happening. And me and Spencer talked about it a little bit on the way here. Then my next job, I'm like, I like this taking pictures, you know, yeah. kind of gig. Just not of your feet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, so, yeah, then I found this job was like for like a foreclosure company. And they're like, hey, every house that you photograph, we're going to give you $10. So 
So like the mind starts okay. racing. I'm like, man, this is like this is pretty yeah. sweet. Gang. You do like thirty <laughs> of these a day. You're making good right. Yeah. So they they send me the last. I'm still pretty fresh to Florida. Yeah. A little too green to know about the traffic yeah. and everything. So they're like, I'm going everywhere from like yeah. Jacksonville uh, to. All over, yeah. I mean, South Florida to Panama City, like yeah. all in the Just same day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then yeah. I remember sometimes there'd be like two in St. Pete. And I'd be like, no, that's a score. Yeah. And then I'd have to drive like four hours yeah, to yeah, the yeah. middle of nowhere. So um, I, st- I really loved it. And I would yeah. be like mapping it out. Like, sounds like it's so long, but like having map quests printed out. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like, how can I do it? And uh, it was funny because I'd be telling people like, hey, I'd be like kind of like almost bragging. Like, they're paying me 10 bucks a picture. Yeah. And I'm like, I bet these guys are probably making like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Again, I just didn't yeah, know how it worked. No idea. <laughs> so then eventually I looked it up and I'm like, I think they're like flipping these houses. And yeah. then I look, oh, flipping houses like for dummies. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I think they're making like a hundred grand. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like my goal. I want to make that like my whole life. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I was just so green to just like business. Yeah. And um, I was loving doing that. And then... uh I don't even really remember how it just kind of then I was like, there has to be more than just like, you know, filling up the gas tank five times a day, yeah. driving for like 18 hours. Yeah. So I got out of the picture game, got into like multifamily, just like working for a company. Yeah. And, and like, working, of, like, were you um, like a management guy or just like it was cold like calling or what? what jack was, of all trades. There was yeah. like some acquisitions and research and yeah. database, a little bit of everything. Yeah, whatever. You're the new guy at the office, whatever they tell yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. So I was doing that and then I... Uh, Always with the, the multifamily, people were moving in. And I remember they'd say, like, well, how long is the lease? And not, like, in a good way. Yeah. Because they wanted to know how long they had to stay there. Yeah. And I'm like, I just I want something where it's, like, they feel like this is home. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, then I kind of saw, like, the writing on the wall, like, with this gig, wanted to get out. So I listed every real estate asset class, which I'm still, like, learning stuff. I'm like, oh, there's storage buildings. And yeah. I guess I'd, like, just very sheltered from the asset class. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know anything. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I listed them all out. So I've got storage, uh, parking lots, land, parks, and I really had no dog in the hunt. And I started to like ox them out. Yeah. And then I also had another list that was like broker, insurance guy, um, yeah, flipper, everything. So I had, like every kind of role in real estate, every yeah. type, started to kind of whittle away at the list. And then I settled on parks for numerous reasons, but um, I've talked about in other shows too. It's the only asset class other than like raw land where they get, they're not building them. Yeah. Every day, probably yeah, truly every day, parks yeah. are being demolished across America. Yeah, so limited supply, increasing demand with the disparity yep. of cost of living. So, 100%. Yeah. So I'm like, I think I'm going to do parks because it seems like this is where there has to be like a lot of demand. Yeah. And I'm still like learning everything. And then and at this time, you're just looking up asset class. And what year yeah. was this around? Uh, this was seven years ago. Okay. I didn't even know asset classes. Yeah. So I'm like writing yeah, stuff. I'm like, what's, I'm like, yeah. what's a marina? Oh my God. What's yeah. People <laughs> invest in marinas. This is right. a thing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know how I thought it worked. I guess I just yeah. thought it was like Those a time shares are yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have really uh, went down the wrong path. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so yeah, right every second. Shout out timeshare, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, one infomercial in the middle of the night. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, just, I list everything out, and then uh, I start to like look up like all the stuff in parks. Like yeah. I type like okay, mobile home park insurance. Yeah. And I see like you know the popular insurance that everybody uses, yeah. like that guy's firm. So I'm like okay, like he's definitely got it. So I'm like keep looking at everything, and then I saw wholesaling. That was one of my kind of like roles on the list. Yeah. And it was all single family. I'm like man, there's like there's nobody wholesaling mobile home parks. Yeah. Like at all. Yeah. So I'm like in groups. I'm looking at it. I was trying to like ask people and they're like, no, like you call yourself or you hire a broker. Yeah. So I'm like, then and there, um, I'm like, this is it. So I dropped out of college, quit my job yeah, and moved just, in with my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you're like, this is what I'm doing. I'm a whole I'm a park wholesaler. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, yeah, I'm a park wholesaler. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, moved in with my grandparents and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going I'm to do parks. Yeah. And uh, in the end, the first park I called, uh, we ended up closing. Wow. Uh, so it's crazy, yeah. and that never happens. But uh, yeah, so I just, that's kind of how it started. It was like this taking pictures to, yeah. there's got to be more out there. And then question, because I actually tell, just sorry to cut you off, but the uh, actionable step along yep. with the stories. So I always tell people that reach out to me, like on Instagram mm-hmm. or YouTube, who aren't in real estate, how do I get into real estate? I tell them, get a job in whatever sector of real estate you want and yep. just be the idiot that works for free and just does whatever they tell yep. you. So like if someone wants to be a wholesaler, 
just go cold call. Go literally mm. tell a wholesaler, yeah. I'll research and cold call for you for free. Yep. Work for him. You're not going to make any money. Maybe he sucks at training, yeah. but at least you get to see what the world is. Yeah. So like that first multifamily <clears throat> job, how'd you like kind of stumble into that from just taking pictures? Correct. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. You're just looking up. I'm like, hey, Craig's is like the best thing ever. Yeah. I'm like, I'm making 10 bucks a picture over yeah, here. Yeah, Who yeah, knows yeah. what else I can do? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I kind of came into a nod and it was like a, a real job. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, before, like in high school, I was just like a soccer referee. Yeah. I worked at a pet shop, yeah. like little entrepreneurial stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, I never knew. Like, yeah, so I got like my first like salary job. And I remember I was so happy. I'll never forget. Yeah. I got, got the email. It's like, you're making 30 grand a year. Yeah. And I was like, like, I was crying. I was money. so happy. Yeah. I'm like, this is, this is it. Yeah. Like, I, I made it. Yeah. And then you just, I think when you like talk to somebody who's making more, you just so quickly. And then it's like, hold on, you're your apartment building makes 30 grand a month yeah and you have 50 of them yeah it's like so i think you really start to realize like in the real estate space and uh, yeah it was like a job and i just i knew like i wanted something for me yeah um and yeah that was the last job i ever worked and ever well and uh yeah the rest is uh history yeah so. sorry so you stumble into the mobile home park space you're like i'm gonna wholesale mm -hmm. um any reason why you gravitated towards wholesaling rather than joining a brokerage yeah, that, that's something I'm always curious. Like, how does someone go down this path versus that path? Yeah, I think it was, I was still, um, yeah, I just didn't know anything. And I'm like, to be a broker, and it's like the stereotype, like, you have a, you have a fancy office, yeah. you have a suit. I'm like, I, I don't have any of that. Yeah. You're like, went to college. I just, you know, had these ideas of it. Yeah. So I'm like wholesaling, and I kind of was reading everything online. These single family wholesale guys seem like they're yeah. just like normal guys like yeah, me. Yeah. And, um, then all the other stuff, I'm like, well, I'm not smart enough to do insurance. I don't even know what insurance really is. Then it's like all these other things. It's like you can be like a property uh, yeah. assessor. I'm like, well, I definitely can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like those were getting chucked off pretty quick. Yeah, like yeah. anything where you have to be like intelligent. Yeah. So I'm you're like, like <laughs> wholesale. I just got to connect two people. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. So I'm like, yeah. are you saying my lack of intelligence over here yeah. is a wholesale? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're the most intelligent. All right, intelligent. guys, wholesalers are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's the I mean, takeaway. It was perfect for me. It was yeah. just like... Yeah, I'm like everything else. I was just so intimidated. I'm yeah. like that just is too scary. I can't do it. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, the all right. So the first deal, how did you find it? Was it just did you know how to just research like public record, find someone's cell phone because the people you're working for with the multifamily stuff? You're like, let yeah. me just start cold calling and see what happens. Or yeah. So the first deal, um, they really are almost like two in tandem. But um, yeah. So yeah, I like looked up studies. And I don't know how I was deciding anything at the time. Like, yeah. I wish I could, like, record it all. Of yeah, just to, like, be like, holy shit, how did I get yeah. to this? Yeah. So I uh, did some city research. I, For whatever reason, I picked Birmingham, Alabama nice. and Florence, South Carolina. Wow, Florence, like, great market. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, this is where we're going to make a, a life out of these two cities. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I, uh, yeah, it all just seems like it's so easy. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, it was insanely difficult. But, yeah, then I just went on, like, Google Maps. Yeah. And just started looking for mobile home parks. Yeah. And I found this one, literally just looked it up, cold, like cold called the number right off of yeah. Uh, Google. Yeah. I think it rang the park sign. Yeah. Which rang the owner. And I'm like, yeah, I'm um, you know, kind of looking to uh, um, <laughs> buy a park. <laughs> Uh, yeah. buy your park. <laughs> yeah, you're stuttering and everything. You're like, he answered. And, uh. and it was like, it was per we we're perfect for each other. Yeah. And this guy's like, uh, I'm. Um, I could just imagine, like, at home, he's like, I'm looking to sell my park. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. This yeah. is that? Like, oh, my, my God. I'm actually so doing fucking yeah. good. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I'm like, what do you want? Yeah. And he's like, well, I owe 425 Again, I just have no idea. I'm like, you want 425 <laughs> And he's like, yeah. So I'm like, all right. Yeah. So it was like so quick. Yeah, yeah. You're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking up, how do I write a contract? Yeah. What is a contract? <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. literally next. I'm like, uh, oh, shit. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, so what do we uh what do we do next? And he's like, Well send me a contract. So I'm like, <laughs> I can just imagine this conversation <laughs> right. going. So I'm like, um okay. <laughs> so I'm like Googling real estate contract. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I had to like get a computer, I'm like taking like, a screenshot. What what is there. earnest money deposit? What what is this? What's a title company? Yeah. What do you mean warranty N deed? No, hundred yeah. percent. And that's the next point. So he's like, Oh, you have to do an earnest money deposit. Yeah. We didn't even know. Yeah. Um so I start up um just picked a random title company. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, I typically do, you know, about 1% to 2%. Yeah, you're like, I don't have that much money. So, uh, yeah, I needed six grand. I, I, I didn't have it. Or I needed, yeah. I forget how much I need. I think I need four. Yeah. And I only had six grand in my name. Yeah. And I'm like, I still have, like, some bills, even though I'm, like, living with my grandparents. So I had to borrow it from my grandma. Nice. And uh, another kind of squirrely chat, like, yeah. hey, grandma and grandpa, 
I don't. They, they didn't even know what a mobile home park was yeah, either. Yeah. So like, it's what like, you mean? What the you blind leading the blind. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I need uh, six thousand dollars for earnest money. Yeah. And they're like, uh, what are you doing? Are you buying something? I'm like, no, I'm gonna flip it. They're like, oh, so you're gonna buy it and resell? I'm like, no, I'm gonna wholesale it. Yeah. And I'm like, kind of reading on my phone even what it's called. <laughs> explain <laughs> yeah, explain to them. So this is hey, what wholesale is. One sec. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm not flipping the real estate. I'm flipping the contract. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah, right. Great. <laughs> in, in the end, uh, yeah, they they put it up for me, cool. and uh, they were so invested in it. It's like one of my fondest memories of like my whole life. And months and months and months later, when it finally closed, I'll never forget. Like I told them, I'm like, guys. I like pulled out my bank account and I showed them. I'm like, I had thirty thousand six hundred dollars. Wow! And they're like, Oh my god, you have a lot of money. I'm like, No, guys, it, it closed. Yeah. Like, I made thirty thousand dollars today. Yeah. And we, like, all three of us, were like crying, yeah. hugging each other. It was wow. just truly one of the best moments of my life. And yeah. in the end, I named my company after the street that they lived on, Sand, Sand, Sand Dollar. Dollar. Wow, that's, that's cool. So. Uh, it was crazy. What, and, what was the, how'd you end up finding a buyer for it? And I know these are like granular questions, yeah, but yeah, I could definitely. see like if someone's new listening to this, they're going to be like, all right, well, yeah, great. You got it under contract. So yeah. how'd you find the buyer? Like what was yeah. the process there? Uh, yeah. So I, again, didn't know. I went on Facebook, found some groups and it was the Birmingham. The, I'm sure the post is still out there. I should try and find it like this weekend. You, dude, you should frame that. Yeah, I really yeah. should. Uh, yeah. And I just posted like I have, it was a two part package. Um, so I'm like, I have a, uh, Two mobile home parks, didn't know how to value them. I think I had it like a 40 cap, but it was actually probably like an eight or a nine. Yeah. Just got lucky. Yeah. And um, yeah, just posted in this group. And uh, yeah, this really nice couple hit me up. And uh, it was their, their first park, too. Yeah. So all of us. Was uh, like, just, everyone's <laughs> like, what do I do? I don't know. It's right. not so, I guess the, the seller's last... just chilling. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, the seller was, uh, he was in DC yeah. and these were in Alabama. And I bet like the title company was almost acting as your guys' attorney because they were yeah. like, here's what you're supposed to do next. No, they here's were. I was next. so yeah, loyal yeah. to that lady. Yeah. Like I had her do like 10 deals for yeah. me. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of new people, by the way, for the new people listening, you don't realize that like if you don't know how contracts, timelines and everything work, the title company does know because they're yep. the ones that handle the deposit for the timelines. 100%. So a lot of times if you're like, hey, what should we be doing warranty deed or quick claim deed or whatever? Ask your title company, hey, what's standard? Hey, who, who covers closing costs? Ask the title company, what's standard? Like, 100%. A lot of times they'll walk you through. It took me a while to realize that. Like, I was like, you like blind lean the yeah. blind, yeah. like my first two years in the business. Yeah. And then one day I'm like, like when the one title lady was like explaining to me, hey, we usually do it this way. I'm like, Oh my God! Yep. they know. <laughs> yeah, they, no, they just, they just process transactions. 100%. Yeah, and that's what got it closed because it truly yeah. was. I truly had no idea what I was doing. Then my grandparents, like on the the financing yeah. side, the buyers never bought a park before. Yeah, the seller was like, "I'm gonna like level with you." I've never even seen it. Yeah, and uh, it was like, yeah, my first kind of dabbling in the management. He's like, yeah. "I think the manager's like stealing all the money." Yeah. Classic. And um, yeah, it got closed. Like, yeah, truly one of the best memories of my life. And. Uh, yeah, and then the rest. Then I knew it was possible. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah once you uh, get the first one, it's oh, like yeah. I, I can make money. Now. Yeah, like, you realize your 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 efforts are worth so much more money than you ever thought. Hundred percent. It's like yeah. when, once you make like we get all both all the test this. Once you get like, I think once you get like twenty thousand in one check, you mm. start to realize wow, a hundred thousand really is not that far off of reality. No, a million yeah. bucks is not that far because like you went from like being broke. To twenty thousand. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, if I got like a twelve thousand dollar check the first mm. one, I don't yeah. think it would have been that big no. a deal. But yeah. something about like twenty twenty five yeah. when you hit that range, it's like, yo, this actually could pay for an yeah. entire year. Thank God we didn't close our little one for the first <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, then you probably would have been the. Best. No, that's how my work is. Like, I'm so big in like the goal setting, and my number one goal, like my whole life at that time, yeah. was I want to make a hundred grand a year. Yeah, and I, I thought it was impossible. I'm like, yeah. I made thirty. Yeah. In one deal. And so I, you're like, five, yeah, and I had three, three times, others bro. under contract. Yeah. You're time. like, oh my, I already have a hundred kind of on paper. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, that's kind of the first one. It was funny because that was my first call in the Birmingham area. Yeah. And then my first call in Florence, I ended up closing that deal too. Yeah. And now I have to make like a thousand calls to get one. Yeah. And yeah. You guys know that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, that one was a little bit different. And um, that deal, I remember, and I've talked about it before too. This guy was like, just like the most like southern like a southern bell but like a guy like whatever the yeah. uh, comparison to that is yeah. like just so just the deep southern accent the like everything's in person like we're talking on the phone i remember he's like every every friday at like nine o'clock i want you to call me yeah and yeah like i had just met my girlfriend at the time we're going out we're hanging out with our friends like friday at nine like i was out yeah. every friday and i remember mm -hmm. for like truly two years i had to step out of whatever we're doing call this guy and we'd talk for like an hour on the phone yeah i'd be like outside of a restaurant for two hours 
and we're just talking about just you know nonsense. Yeah. But in the end, that's what got that park closed for like six k a pod, yeah. and he was happy, and uh, he bought it like fifty years ago, and he's like sold it for fifty grand more than um than he bought it for. He's like, I yeah. want to make a thousand a year. And I've owned it for like 50 years or so yeah. something wow. insane. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and at the time, I, I never made offers. I, my strategy was just asking them, like, what do you want? Yeah. And I should go back to it because they yeah. would just always tell me. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. That, that is my number one. Uh, the number one for me is, is asking. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I ask, what do you want? Hmm. They give me a baseline. Yeah. Because otherwise you're wasting your time. Because yeah. if I'm going, you know, a lot of these phone conversations are 30 mm-hmm. to two minutes to an hour once you get them yeah. on the phone. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I'm not getting off this phone without knowing a price. Yeah. And so one of the biggest strategies that I have is, okay, tell me what you want. Yep. They give me a number. Okay. Talk a little bit more. Mm. And let's say it's a residential deal, maybe yeah. not a park, because you yeah. can underwrite. You underwrite the park. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And then the next question is, after we talk a little bit more, so if I pay all closing costs, there's no commissions involved, mm. what's the best price you think you could do for me? Yeah. 20% deduction right there. Yeah. You know? There's, million, there's your fee. Million, yeah. uh, there's it, my commission. Right, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we went from 200, let's say it's a residential deal, to, to, to 180. Great. Well, this $110,000 offer I'm about to give you is looking a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, if you don't ask, and, and that's where I think a lot of people make the mistake, it's like you'll spend 25 minutes on a phone conversation without yeah. even fi- getting the price. And then, oh, hey, by the way, I got to go back to work. Click. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you have to reignite that conversation again to try and get the price. It's like... Get yeah, the, and, that, the and that's another thing that shows like advanced sales skills, and that's actually something I'm trying to teach um, the two guys that are working for me. So, like a big mm. thing that I always emphasize, it's exactly what you're both of you guys are saying. Mm. Like every single phone call that I have, what is the conclusion of that phone call that moves it towards the next step? Mm. I notice that new guys who are unsure what to do <clears> with themselves, yeah. they're scared to make defining answers by the end of every phone call. So, yeah. like. For example, let's say, hey, someone's working on a contract. Well, what day are you going to get the contract back to me? All right, mm. Wednesday, I'll follow up Wednesday if I don't hear back yep. from you. Hey, what price do you want from it? Try and figure out how to get a number from them so that way you know mm. what's your next step yep. rather than leaving it vague. And mm. then you're like, do I just follow up again? Then you have to reignite the whole phone call again. And that, that goes to everything. I've, I've actually been making a like, really good point to try and teach my guys that. So it's interesting you're saying that yep. both kind of from yeah. three separate points of view. Look, yeah. I mean, I'm not conclusions. calling about the weather. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, let's I get am. down to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I you guys you on, do what you're doing. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I listen, no, I listen to you on Keel's podcast. You love to become their friend. Oh, for yeah, sure. That, that's that's your. That is like that's my niche, my bread and butter. And I've said yeah. before, like all the deals that I've done, like no, like we've done JV deals. Spencer and I've done a bunch. We have some different seller profiles, but like all of like my solo deals, the sellers, if they all sat down in here. They're like showing up in the same pickup truck, yeah. The same kind of type of guy, and like yeah, in the end, I don't, they would never sell to like the big fancy broker, yeah. And I don't pretend to be their friend. Like I become their friend, yeah. I go there, I go fishing with them, we go out to dinner, yeah. Like we do become friends, and I think like he leaves it vague. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of people. Like yeah. I think on other shows, like I've said, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna like try and do that. I'm like. You have to actually do genuinely it. genuinely be that. Like that I, person. I've stayed at sellers' houses before. Like, I yeah. go into town. And it just kind of happens. They're like, yeah. oh, where are you staying? I'm like, I don't know. We never pre-booked the hotels. I'm like, oh, you got a spare couch? Yeah. And everybody always wants to be, like, welcoming. And yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, we do. And, and they're like, that, that's your ticket to you're, yeah. you're going to be their buyer no matter what. Yeah, like, and they can't yeah. believe it. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, sleeping on the couch. Yeah, I'm like, like, you got an extra shirt? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, like, I do it. Like, I have them pick me up from the airport. Like, yeah. sometimes if I'm doing, like, a day trip, I'm like, hey, if you don't mind... I'm trying to get in and out on the same day. Yeah. Do you mind like picking me up from the airport? Yeah. And I think it's like when somebody does like a little favor for you, it does. Yeah, it does. It, it reinforces. Like, you yeah, like yeah. reciprocate up. Yeah. And it's all genuine though. Yeah. And I think it doesn't work if you're not if you're genuine. genuine. Yeah. yeah. And I really do. Like I invite them. I'm like, you come down to Florida. Yeah. Like I, I want to take you fishing. Yeah. And I really do. And that's like my favorite part about like dealing with the parks yeah. on the, the buy side is like, I do love that. And a lot of the sellers like, yeah, we're sending each other Christmas cards. We're friends on Facebook. They're like, oh, you're having a baby? We're getting, like, gifts in the mail yeah. from sellers of deals from years ago. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, we saw, like, you know, the baby shower. Sorry we couldn't make it. Yeah. And, like, yeah, they don't owe me anything. We, like, bought their park four years ago. Yeah. But it's uh, that's, like, how good of, like, the relationships I'm, like, trying to form. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, guys, there's going to be a loud train yeah. for the next 25 seconds. <laughs> this is the drawback of Ybor City, Florida. Ybor. We got roosters out there, trains. Dude, the roosters are cool, though. I yeah. like the roosters. They give, bring the character. And in the mornings, yeah. so they... You ever they, try to catch one? 
Yeah, like dude, Rocky so style? I'm, I've been wanting, I haven't had time to, but my plan was to try and feed the same one all the time and like become homies with one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That way it's like, yo, that's that's my rooster right there. I I'm up, sure you can. No. Yeah, I think if I fed one. The parking lot's full of them. Yeah, you know? dude. They're, and they, you know what's crazy? I didn't know they can get up high places. They sleep in the trees, bro. Really? They get oh, up wow. in the trees. Yeah. So you'll yeah. walk, like in the morning, I'll pull up. I'm like, yo, there's like fucking seven of them in the trees. Yeah, you've been to Key West before? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the only other yeah. place I think other than here that, that has, has roosters yeah. running around. Yeah. I'm surprised they even connect up the dots. It's just yeah. Tampa and Key West. Yeah, and then they have a lot of gays running around too. It's kind of like, you, know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys got all Yeah, what's yeah going the, the on roosters here? never made it like up the Keys, yeah, never made it to out. Miami. Yeah, like, um, yeah. We have like the nude bar down there too. It's like yeah. Garden of Eden. Yeah, what's too, going so, on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. It's uh, funny stuff. Um, all right. So now next steps going from, all right, now you're wholesaling. Mm. You're doing the thing. Did you ever have, at least in the beginning, really like in the processes or was it really just like you're sort of building maybe an excel list of some database some mm. buyers and just building a buyers list but nothing too fancy no email blast nothing just slinging, I was always slinging, focused, slinging yeah. on the phones i was always focused on just like the relationships and like if you have a yeah. good deal it's gonna sell itself yeah and then it was always like not mass marketing stuff okay i want to make a couple calls do like yeah. the same deals with the same people and um and yeah, like that that couple that um, had bought that first one for me, like we went on to do like a lot of business together. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of the other people have done, I've done like over 10 deals with I think three or four different groups. So it's like 40 cool. right there. And uh, and yeah, it was really just focused on just deals. Yeah. I'm like, because everybody wants, and that kind of like had reassured like my initial thought of like why to get in the parks. I'm yeah. like, I remember in the beginning, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I've got four of these. I have, a, I have a picture of, like, my whiteboard. I don't have a huge whiteboard where I write all the deals on. And I'm like, four is too much. But the people, they want 40. Yeah. So I, like, had, you know, wrote out, like, a bunch of blanks. I'm like, I got to fill it. I'm like, yeah. if I can get the perks, I could, like, I'll get the buyers. Yeah. So I was, like, just so just focused on just calling letters. And those were, like, yeah, again, like, some of my, that's why, like, I named it Sand Dollar. But, like, my fondest memories, I'd, like, wake up at, like, six seven in the morning and truly work until like two or three yeah. and my grandparents were like you're crazy and i was like sitting in this like little plastic like kids chair in the yeah, room i'm yeah, like yeah. guys like this is like, like this, this is the hunt this is the yeah. this is the multi six figure death it's <laughs> right. a stupid little plastic no and thing. i still yeah. have the chair because i'm like this is like temporary i'm like yeah. i don't want you guys to think like i'm like just like mooching yeah i'm like i'm gonna like live in a house like this one day yeah. like I i'm gonna do it guys yeah and, um, yeah, I was just, like, grinding just so hard, working yeah. the phones. I'd be like, yeah, I finally had, like, some money from the deal. So now I'm buying plane tickets. I'm driving. Yeah. Doing anything. I'm like, and I'm like, all the other guys have more money. They're smarter. They're better. More experienced. But I'll be there first. Yeah. And that was, like, my whole motto for, like, the first, like, probably three years. Yeah. I'm like, nobody will beat me there. Yeah. And I did, like, a big deal in Kansas. And the guy was like, I think he just thought it was, like, local. Yeah. And he's like, you want to do dinner, like, tonight? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah let's do it. And it was in the morning. I, I flew yeah. there that day. Yeah. I'm like, nobody <laughs> will G, ever bro. beat me to, yeah. like, to the deal. So I'm like, that's why I tell, like, a lot of the guys who reach out to me of, like, hey, I want to get started in the business. But I, I can never do what you're doing. It's I'm like, like you right, can. You I'm like, where do you yeah. live? They're like, oh, I live in Charlotte. I'm like, you're better than me in Charlotte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're there quicker. Yeah. I'm like, you go there in an hour. Yeah. I got I to gotta fly yeah, there. Yeah. So I'm like, no matter what, like the best, the best is never the best yeah. to somebody who's local. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I agree with that. The how did you transition to buying your first park? So, and first question would be how long from like let's say you did your first deal. Mm -hmm. When did you actually say, hey, I want to either buy a park or just take equity in one? Um, mm -hmm. And then when you were at the stage, you were buying a park or partnering. Did you already have like a nest egg of capital built up in addition to raising mm -hmm. money, or what did that look like? Yeah, I think the first one that I like owned a piece of the guy uh, didn't really know what a park was we just kind of bumped into each other at like a family function yeah. he's like a friend of a friend of a friend yeah. and he's oh just the typical kind of like water cooler topic like, what do you do yeah and i'm like oh, i do trailer parks told him like more about it and he's like yeah let's like let's meet up we grab coffee like a week later and he's like, I, I can't do this on my own and i'm like uh well i i could do it for you I'm like, I feel yeah. like I know enough now. Yeah. So I had like three or four like kind of in like conjunction at the same time where there was like another guy. <laughs> he was across the country. We were doing like a deal in Florida. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, like I'm right here. Yeah. I'm like, you're going to you're going to fly here to do this. Yeah. I'm like, let, let me. me. Yeah. Let me manage it. And you negotiate yeah. some equity or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'll stuff. print the papers. I'll go there. I'll go door to door. Yeah. I'm like, I'll go. I'll go sit in the park a day a week at yeah. the time. You know, I had a lot more time. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll I'll do it. 
So I was talking to a couple of groups, and then I pretty quickly realized, and not surprising, but nobody wants to manage trailer parks. Yeah. So I think when everybody was like immediately like, hold on, so you're going to bring us the deal and you'll manage it? Yeah. So then I started doing that. I'm like, I'll bring you the park, uh, still do the fee, but then I, I want like a management fee. Yeah. So I started doing that. And then I realized I was like leaving more meat on the bone, and we were like so valuable in what yeah. we were doing because we were like a. And so at this, you were only just doing management. You're like, for the pay, first pay me a management fee, I'll manage it. But then you realize yeah. I should be negotiating some equity for this because you're yeah. find the deal, putting it together. And yeah. Everything. yeah. Yeah. No, so then I started doing that. And I think like my first one, I had like 1% equity okay. in. And that was like another really fun memory. I'm like, I'm on the board now. Like, yeah. I own something. Yeah. And I'm um, like, I'm a real, park. real estate investor in the years ago. But yeah, 40 units. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got 200 units, yeah. 2% equity. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, that was me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember at the time, I'm like, I think I, I would even tell people, I'm like, yeah, I have like 200 units, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't even own a house. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I started doing yeah. like these like 1%, 2%, 5%. Yeah. So you were completely green on like syndication structures and realizing, hey, you could do like waterfalls and negotiate like 30% of the upside, yeah. 50% of the I still, upside. I still don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. This is like just, we're doing like straight like JV yeah. stuff. And you're just like, can you give me this, this percent? Or, yeah. So it's we'll like, split it this way. Yeah. We do yeah. like the concierge thing. I don't think there's anybody in the country that does what we do. So we go, we find the park, yeah. 100% off market. We bring it to you. Yeah. We do all of the due diligence. Insurance, our phase one guy, everything. Yeah. We close it. We have the title company. We onboard it. And we let go. We meet every tenant, yeah. no matter what day of the year it is. Minnesota in the winter, yeah. we're there. We fully onboard it. We do everything. Yeah. And that's why you're... Um God, I'm, I can't ever forget his name. Fucking, your boy is always funny. Uh, yeah, Jade. Jade. Yeah, 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 I can't believe, dude. Jade August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah August. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. like, August, because uh, I yeah. always look at his Instagram. August, his middle name is Jade. But oh, okay. August, Jade. Okay, yeah. so, okay. Yeah. so that, I had the name right. I just yeah, didn't want to yeah, say, I'm did. like, August on the sound. Yeah. Right. I don't remember calling no, him that. Yeah. But, so, like, like, you guys actually, you try and do, like, an actual in person, hey. Oh, no, we don't try. We do it every yeah. time. Every time. Yes, okay. it was like Minnesota <laughs> two winters ago. It was like negative 30. I have a screen. Yeah, and you're out there. <laughs> yeah, 100 knock, side knock. park. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, no, like, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Like, our, like, we do it right. We onboard them right. And we were there negative 30 yeah. going door to door. And even the tenants were like, yeah. they were shocked. Yeah. And they're like, oh, the other big park in town sold. And they just got letters. Yeah. Um, that, that's not us. We're here. So like, you really like, you really found your way into the biz because you were one of the first people really willing to just hands-on manage things. 100%. Like no one wanted to before me. Yeah. Because now there's some management companies that'll do it for like 50 sites plus, mm -hmm. but like you were like one of the first guys really that's like, yeah. hey, I'll wholesale it, I'll manage it. We manage it. anything. Yeah. That's six-sider, we're managing. Yeah, that's why it was yeah. always interesting what I was talking about earlier at the intro. It's like, you're the first guy I saw out there that like, Every, every operator is like, I don't want to do a 17-unit this, a 12-unit that, mm -hmm. a 30-unit this. But you were always like, yeah, we just closed on 12 units here, mm -hmm. 8 units there, 22 units That's here. That's what got them all closed. Because like yeah. that first year, like as soon as I started to see people who like, we uh, the most common objections, I love the deal. It's yeah. a great price, especially back then. Yeah, it's the management. And it's always mom and pop. And like, who's going to manage it? I'm like, we will. Yeah. And, and they're like, how are you going to do it? I'm like, well, this is how. We're going to go there. We're going to yeah. drive. We're going to fly. We're going to meet every tenant. We're going to pick an on-site manager. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, we'll do it. So what's, what's, that, um, what's the value proposition in the sense of, all right, cause so what was the first one you took equity? You say you just got 1%. Was it like you're splitting up cash flow or anything? Or you're just getting your management fee and that's it? The first one I did, it was 38 sites in Oklahoma. Okay. I did, I think I had two, I think a two or two and a half percent. It was okay. one, two, something so, like Something yeah. bullshit, yeah. I did that, and it was in 5% of gross to manage it. Okay, and that's, again, that's cheaper than every, yeah. everyone's 10% yeah. for small parks now, 8% at the yeah. lowest. Yeah. yeah, no, so we do, yeah. So that was the first one. Yeah, so you're just providing so much value that's, like, undeniable, and then you mm. realize you're like, oh, we could be charging more, we could be taking equity. We could. Yeah, and that's when it started, because it was just really fee, then it was fee and management. Yeah. And then I realized, I'm like, then, like, the buyers started to not go see the parks. Like, and they're like, hey, you're doing 100% of everything. Yeah. So I'm like, if you're doing due diligence and everything, uh, you're like, everything. I'm, I'm taking equity. Right? Yeah, like they're like they run the numbers. They they're like lining up the finance. Yeah, they're doing yeah. their part. They got the money. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm not bringing any money to the table. I'm like, we are doing 100 percent of everything. Cool. So then I'm like, why should they do an equity? Would you would you take the fee too, or would you keep the fee in the deal? And we've always done the fee just to like kind of fund the yeah, operation. Yeah, keep the lights on. So like even now, like our main like we that's like a triple play thing. Like our main business model is we do the fee. Yeah. We manage it and we take equity. Cool. And I think there's so much value that we're bringing, yeah. and there's so much upside in the deals. Like, we've done 93, none of them have gone wrong. Yeah. Um, so it's like, 
yeah, like I know I believe in it so much and yeah. we go there, we see it and we're yeah. like so hands on. I'm like, in the end, like it can't go wrong. We do diligence so hard. And then, yeah, like, Jade's killing it. Like, he's on the road, like, five days All a week. the time, bro. All Every day he's flying. Yeah. I'm like, he's a killer, bro. He's an amazing he, guy. No, he won the join today, but he's, yeah. he's on the road. So, like. Yeah, dude, it'd be awesome to have him. Because I'd lo- we should yeah. do a podcast episode with just him, too, because I'd love to hear about him mm-hmm. being on the road and crazy stuff. I'm sure both of you guys have oh, the sicko stories about yeah, just crazy. Yeah, that's, like, my favorite thing to talk yeah. about is, like, the crazy park yeah, we'll, stories. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> no, it would be, like, yeah, we can do an episode of just that, an episode yeah. of, like, just selling homes. Yeah. Like, just op stuff. But, uh. Yeah, like, I just know, like, we are, like, a concierge. Like, we have, yeah. like, clients that they've never seen the park. They yeah. never will. And it's a 20-site screaming deal. Yeah. We have, like, 10 parks that are in towns under 1,000 people. So it's, like, nobody's going to manage that. So, like, our bread and butter is these tiny town, solid deals, often direct build, a lot of POHs. But, like, yeah, it's, like, the dream team. Like, would, you, would you mess with some rural 20 units in Iowa? We have a bunch. We have a bunch of. Fun. I know, but I'm saying like I I have distressed owners on this uh, three parks out there. Yeah. Like they'll let it go for like 10k a site. No, Wait, is it clear? <laughs> 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 hey, you didn't yeah. hear this. <laughs> no, yeah, 100. percent Like that's a lot of what yeah. we've done is these small towns and uh, yeah, we're able to like roll in there. Like Jade's in there. My brother works for me full time now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like they're there. They're like trashing out homes. Like we you hit it so hard and yeah. so right. Like. What, um, so what like investor returns are you offering like your partners and everything? Like, is it like you're quoting like, Hey, we'll give you 50%. We're, we're expecting 15, 20% mm-hmm. IRR over five years. Or what's kind of like your value prop, especially yeah. now that you're establishing, you're kind of doing everything. What's the returns that you're quoting for investors? I've never really like gone into that world. Like, I, okay. I don't think if, if you like in my email searched IRR, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's yeah, not you stay out, yeah. You're not in that. that no. Dude, what's, what's so odd to me is that you don't operate like any of the, Especially me with the brokerage side, I deal with like all like the institutional. Yeah, mm. the suit and tie. Oh, yep. is, we we have the here's our fund structure and our no. and IRR waterfall and everything. It's yeah. like guys, guys, like on how much money are you gonna make? Yeah, no, <laughs> like, yeah, but, but like you, you make money. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, make my, a lot of like money. If, yeah, I've if you always, search water, always respect that. Usually, about when you. they use a bunch of those words, they're not making any. Money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. So our models always been. <laughs> we're just like we're straight. We're we're partners. Like, we're going into this, like, we're 80 20. Yeah. 70 30, 90 10, you know. You being on the smaller portion, right? Because they're providing capital. Yeah. So yeah. They, but you're still doing all the, yeah. Yeah, they bring a But you just do super, super, like, you don't do any, like, 70 30 after a no. certain amount of percent. It's just like, hey, the, this is the deal. 30% is going, going to me, 70% yes, to you. If it's like, how we're splitting yeah, them. the yeah. park is just, say, a million. Yeah. And we're 80 20. Yeah. That they've got 800K, technically. Yeah. I've got 200. Yeah. So it's like, we're bringing that much value. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, the park is worth one nine, yeah. just say. But yeah, we've never got into the yeah, waterfall was, IRRs. It's like we yeah. are just straight, like we are we are partners. Yeah, keep it simple too. Yeah. I like I, lo- I love yeah. that because I think so many people that are learning this space and trying to under they get too complicated with yeah. it too early. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. You know now but, now if Jimmy Jimmy wants to go do that world, he's got well, the credibility I, I, to yeah, do it. And I think at the at the highest level, so I, the the right. only reason why people. And this is a thing to explain to newer guys too who don't understand the sophisticated world. Like syndication structures, ultimately, they sound super complicated. But the reason why you have certain preferred returns, hurdles, mm-hmm. and different, and like a tiered IRR and tiered splits, is mm-hmm. actually to protect the investor right. because 100%. you want to tier it in the way that the GP only makes his money, money if that they're performing at asset. certain thresholds. Exactly. But if you're buying good enough deals, sometimes it's easier to just simplify it. If yep. it's a 20-unit deal, you right. have one capital guy. Mm. You're the operator. Yeah. You, we don't need all that shit. Now, if, we got, yeah. if we're raising 500 grand from four different investors and we're mm. buying an $8 million deal, it's like, okay, yeah, now exactly. we need to start doing some more yeah. sophistication. Right. But yeah. yeah, and we've done a lot where it's like, yeah, there is four or five people, and it's like, hey, we're doing like a 20, 20, 20, yeah. 20, 10. And you still keep it super simple, just it's like super that. simple yeah. no matter what. It's like everything just like rinse and repeat. We have like just a WhatsApp group. Everybody, I'm like, if you own a piece of the deal, you're in the group. Yeah. You're you're like even you, everyone knows what's going on. There's yeah, no, like, yeah. if you don't want to like read it, you don't want don't read it. But you're gonna be in the group and like yeah, Jade's yeah. at one of the parks now. Sold a home. Hey, we sold a home, and it's not only the good news that we put in there. We put the bad news too. Hey, we're fighting this eviction. This is going on. That's going on. We lost money this month, but it's so transparent. And I think yeah. like all of like my main partners, like they they come to my house, I stay at theirs. Yeah, like all of them, we get along so good. It's like. Yeah, I've hung out with all of them. We've gone out together, and it's just like I've really just tried to just keep it simple, easy, yeah. clean, and just so easy to understand. 
So then, like, when a lot of these park buyers that I'm working with, they're bringing, like, their friends and family in. Yeah. They're like, hey, the park is 500 grand. Yeah. If you put in 100, you get 20%. Yeah. Uh, we do have an operator who's doing everything. He's going to get 10%. Yeah. This is the structure. And there's never been anybody who's like, yeah. oh, that's too much. Or he doesn't deserve it. Like, everybody's so happy with it. And then when we sell, what we sell it for is just an easy divide up. Like, there's never any issues yeah. with it. Just, it's so simple. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they only say that to me. That's <laughs> ah, too much. Fuck that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, knock, it, knock his six grand down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, man. The, uh, <laughs> the, um, so when you're, when you're looking at deals to buy, mm -hmm. um, well, actually, one thing to summarize, again, just for the newer viewers, because the people who have most of the questions is, like, newer people, especially on the podcast yep. and everything. Someone who's advanced, who owns 1,000 units, probably is. They'd be like, they're doing this wrong, this wrong, this yeah, wrong. Or, or they're just not listening. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But the, for the newer guys, so, like, your basically strategy into the game was, aside, wholesaling, first of all, just to make money and get yep. into the game. And then from wholesaling, you took on management. Once you had management experience, now mm. you could go negotiate equity because you're actually yep. bringing something to the table because yep. you know how to manage. Okay, that's that's interesting. And it's it's remained the same. Like we're yeah. structuring deals the same way in year six as we were at like the end of year one. Yeah. So what um what's your underwriting thresholds of like what's what's most important to you when you analyze the deal? Like back then it was probably simple because you could buy things at way mm -hmm. better returns than today in the competitive mm -hmm. market. So like today, when you're looking at a deal, are you looking at day one cash flow? Are you looking at like, hey, what's our exit going to look like over five years where we could take the rents? Like, are you mm. pro forma driven? Are you cash flow driven? Or are you like, mm -mm. if we can get in a deal, we like the market, we're willing to stick it out for 10 years, even if we're not going to make good money on it the first few. What's, what's yeah. kind of your threshold? I know it changes. Yeah. Like if you're in a major MS, like if you're in Des Moines, Iowa, it's yeah. going to be different than looking at rural fucking. Yeah. Somewhere. No, 100%. And, and yeah, it varies a lot. I think we're probably more like pro forma driven. I've even yeah. said before, like a lot of these parks, I wish they were vacant when we got them. Yeah. Because you could raise rents easier. You could yeah, sell and, off the homes yeah, easier. Like yeah. Like we yeah. take on these all POH parks. Yeah. And it's a renter mindset. And yeah. that's fine. Like, hey, the people, they want to rent. Like, they yeah. don't want to own. But like our model is we want to have homeowners. Yeah. So we roll in there and like we've got our ladder of, hey, we're becoming like a tenant owned home community. And we've got a down pat. It just takes so much longer. Like, we're doing a deal now. It's, uh, um, it was one that Spencer and I did together. It was 10 or 14 sites. And, uh, yeah, Jade's been there. It was all POHs. Is another 6K? And that, we've had a little bit more there. Eight, 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 eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, guys. And, uh, yeah, the, the play there. Cut that out. <laughs> yeah, we're going to chop it all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blur it. The, the yeah. IRS is I'm going I'm to bleep, bleep it so they think it's like, oh, 40K. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, that one was all, like, the plan there is just turn it yeah. to, like, all TOHs. And, you know, I think we have three homes left. Yeah. So there's only 10 cider. We've sold yeah. seven. But the hardest part is, like, three of the people there wanted to buy their homes. Yeah. But the other four were like, hey, we'll give you, you know, 90 days. They move yeah. out. But if, like, if we just got that thing vacant, uh, closed, we would have been done in, like, two weeks. Yeah. The problem's not selling homes. So it's, like, it depends. Like, yeah. I, I, one, one thing, like, touching on that is, like, what, what really stands out to me from – having underwritten just fucking a million deals yeah. and doing a ton mm. of deals and everything. When there's buyers trying to get in the space and they're looking for tenant owned, mm. I'm like, well then where is your upside and value add? Cause if you're looking for all tenant owned, mm. but you're not trying to buy a stabilized asset, what value are you trying to add? Yeah. Like I always yeah. tell people, if you're trying to buy a deal and then like they'll go look at infill deals, but it's infill is really hard. hard. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you should be going after park on home parks with mm -hmm. below market rents because yeah. all you got to do is give the homes away essentially yep. and convert the tenant on. And you almost don't even have to raise the rents like Derek's strategy, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it was like, if a park on homes charging or if there's a bunch of vacant park on homes, he could just give the home away for free and set the lot rates at 750. Mm -hmm. That's 80,000 a pad right there. Yeah. Yeah. Day one. Yeah. So like you're saying, you're better off having homes on site vacant yeah. as long as they're good homes and not shit yeah, homes. Yeah. They don't have to. No, even, even if they're like really handy man homes and like a lot of people want to own their home like yeah. we have a park here in tampa where uh, it was all poh's place was a dump yeah now it's all toh's it's it's amazing yeah and everyone treats it their it's their own home it's their they, own home private yeah. ownership i yeah. mean they're redoing their driveways gravel painting and a yeah. lot of those people there and we're very very like fair with them we're selling yeah. their homes for like four grand eight yeah. grand whatever or essentially giving it away just to get them in there yeah, yeah. and i remember there'd be like hey like yeah, again, like they're and they know a lot about me, especially here because like yeah. I'm local. But they're like so appreciative, and they're yeah. like, "Hey, Jimmy, like we've never owned anything. 
you know, I've always like had to, you know, I have a car payment. I've never owned a home. I've had tenants who are like crying. They're like, yeah, my dad told me, you know, 50 years ago, I never own anything. Yeah. And I own my home. Yeah. And it's like such like a feel good thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, they, they own their home. And it's not like yeah, they do. It's theirs. They, if they want to move it, they can move yeah. it. If they want to sell it, they could sell it. And in this park, it's funny because before people couldn't like in the beginning, they really couldn't sell their homes. And then now I used to buy a lot of them back because yeah. they'd be like, oh, yeah, just buy it for what you sold it to me yeah. for. Now they got, you know, smarter because they're like, yeah. oh, the neighbor sold his for 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll make mine's nicer. I'll sell mine. Yeah, 50. so some yeah. of them have been like making real money. on Yeah, their own. real yeah. money. And they're like, thank you. They're like, hey, Jimmy, thank you. Yeah. Like I had something that was worth nothing. Yeah. And now I have an asset yeah. that I could sell for 40 grand. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, I could give that money to my kids. Yeah. If I'm, I'm sick and old, I'm going to pass away. Like yeah. my wife is taken care yeah. of. So, I mean, yeah, they're not all like that, but here it is nice and that yeah. these are like feel good. Like, yeah, they have a $40,000 asset yeah. that they bought for five. And so. that's another important thing too that I feel like people now, so like the, the landscape of mobile home parks mm -hmm. is changing so drastically. When I first got into biz, parking homes weren't that valuable, but now this whole, a park's only worth what the lot rents and land value is, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist anymore because parking yeah. homes are legitimately valuable. Yeah. Like like a 90s parking home's worth 25 That's grand. That's all Jay does. All, day. all he does is sell homes. Yeah, and, and yeah, you're you selling make, homes yeah. for real money. It's, yeah. not like, no. it's not like back in the day you're, you'd struggle, especially in good market. Like in Florida, you could sell a 90s home in Florida at 35, 40 grand if it's a good market. Yeah. So like a lot of people don't realize like when you're, look, when you're evaluating parks, there's so much value on parking homes now that wasn't there traditionally just because like with the Frank Rolf boot camps and everything mm -hmm. where it was like, Lot rents and city utilities only. That was great in yeah. 2016. Yeah. yeah. Not so great 2020. No, and that's what I've told like a lot of guys who are looking to get into the buzz. Like yeah. the best thing you could do, park owners hate vacant homes. Yeah. And you know, Spencer and I, we've even got like doing some like homes and parks on our yeah. own. Like I've said the most valuable thing somebody could do. Like if somebody's like, Hey, I want to get into the space, I'm like no. If somebody called me and they're like, Hey, I live in Missouri. Yeah. You have any vacant homes? I'd pull up like my spreadsheet. We've got eight there right now. Yeah. If they're like, can I buy one? I'll give you a fix it, flip a thousand dollars. Now they're in a park. They're paying the lot rent. They yeah. understand. They're talking to tenants. They see how a mobile home is built. Yeah. They could <clears throat> now they're advertising it. Like you would learn more in doing one home in a park. Yeah. So a lot of my buddies, like we've sold them homes for you know, given them away for nothing, yeah. and they've learned so much. And some of them holding for rentals. Others have flipped them. And I think there's so much. Like, that's the most valuable thing. Yeah. Well, like, even if somebody listening to this, I mean, yeah, we're in 20 states. We have a vacant home in at least 20 states. Because yeah. we're always. And if someone's willing know, to go do the work for you and infill that for yeah. you, it's like get it, get it like rent ready and yeah. everything. And but, all we care about is the lot rent. Yeah. So, yeah, we can give it to them for nothing. They fix it up a little bit, clean it, paint it, put it on Facebook Marketplace. Like, they're going to make money. We're happy, and they yeah. learn, and now they're in the game. Yeah. Now it's like, hey, you want to do 10 more of those? Yeah. And now they're basically, 20? now they have management experience. It'd be yeah. much easier for them to go raise money because, like, I know, how to inf I know how to raise the rents. I know how to inf like fill the vacancies of this. And I've told people, yeah, you do that. Now if you're trying to, like, get your first deal closed, yeah. you can, like, show your investors. Like, and I, I still buy and sell homes in our own parks. Yeah. Like, a tenant's moving. And I, you know, tell her, yeah. like, my partners, like, hey, this tenant wants 10 grand for their home. Yeah. I'm just making, you know, the knowledge yeah, perfect. Yeah. I'm going to buy it for 10, and I sold it for 20. Yeah. And it's like, even I do it now, yeah. even with all the other stuff going, because it's so much opportunity in that. Yeah. And there's like real money. Yeah, because no, no operators yeah. want to mess with home rehabs when they got no. thousands, hundreds of units all over the place. Yeah. No, and most times when our tenants have to move, it's because like, hey, I'm moving across the country. But yeah. it's never like, hey, we're like buying a house across town. Yeah. It's always like, hey, like we need to go. We know you could pay cash. Yeah. So yeah, we get a discount because we're, you know, providing like the quick cash close. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, um... So you guys are like flipping some some of the homes in communities you guys have moved. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So interesting. You know, that that's the world that I haven't really been involved in much at so all. So now you're you're kind of getting your feet wet. Yeah, exactly. Like what, what's what's it like to actually like turn a, turn a home in this community, and then you'll have experience with. I mean, it's a process. Yeah, it's a lot. You know, a thousand yeah. DMs that you got to respond to. It's it's a process. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a business in itself. Yeah, because you're and, more retail facing now because you're people yeah, that are looking. Yeah, at you know, the house marketplace sure. answering all the yeah, questions yeah. and things like that. But you know, I mean, mm. and. and you know, I've outsourced, you know, my brother, um, yeah. he, he sits in a car dealership all day and he's doing a lot of that for me yeah. and it gives him a chance to make money and, and, uh, you know, we split it of course, Yeah. but it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, it's an interesting business. Yeah. It's, um, we're looking at taking some down as personal rentals. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, dude, I was thinking about you know, doing kind of the Lonnie dealer thing. Yeah. just, just, yeah. just to, just yeah. to F with it. Cause I know that in so many communities, like 
so many of the parks that I sell, this is interesting you bring it up, because so many of the parks that I sell, I'm like, if we can't agree on number, but I know they have vacancies, they're too old to deal with it. It's mm -hmm. like, yo, how about I come in there and just try and fill five? No, it's funny that you mention it, because like, we've really made it like a big component of us trying to get deals done. Yeah. And even now, like in Newport Richard, where I live, we have a park there. Yeah. Two of the tenants were moving. Yeah. They're like, hey, they had to, had to move in a hurry. Yeah. So I bought a home for like a grand and for two grand. Yeah. And I was like, I was going to flip them. And I'm like, I'm just going to hold them as rentals. Yeah. And for a lot rent there, it's 500. Yeah. Rent there for their one once and probably get nine. Yeah. And I put, I think, all in five into them. So my total like nut end is seven grand. And I'm going to have eight, um, eight, nine hundred dollars a month in cash flow yeah, off I, the two. I was thinking like, again, running numbers, like so many people on the park ownership side do mm -hmm. not value park and home income. But I'm like. It's cash flowing, 400 yeah. bucks on top of the lot rent per month. Well, what do you mean you don't value that? So I'm like, if you don't value that, I'll yeah, just go man. buy the home and rent. Yeah. I was thinking well, about even, that, but that's... Even so. the RTO side. Like, yeah. the, the, the I RTO, mean, dude, it's no, unbelievable. No maintenance. They, no, they, maintenance. They, no maintenance. No maintenance. Not, like, you know, I was talking with Jimmy. I'm just like, man, dude, I'm going to take some of these down and RTO yeah. them. Yeah. Know, well, I'll, get, I'll get cash for the down payment. They're going to yeah. RTO. I don't have to deal with the maintenance or the headache. And then they're going to pay me over so many years. And it's cash flow, right? Get pay the lot rent, but then, you know, get the difference. And it's like... It's so much but value for, the, this for is, the park this owner. Is and, yeah. and you're helping, and, and to get off the greediness, you know, like making money, blah, blah, blah. You're actually helping these people as well that, you know, yeah. hey, I don't have the 12 grand or 25 grand to put yeah. down on a house right now, cash, because not a lot of people in this economy has that. So it's like, yeah. look, so I'm a hardworking person. I can put $2,500 down. You're helping me out. They're, you know, yeah. they're taking care of the maintenance. Do they pass background check? Like, yeah. Well, and there's so. a lot of value to the park owners. Like a park it, that I manage yeah. in Missouri, I found a home, like we're always looking for stuff on Marketplace. I found yeah. one that was three grand. So we bought it for three. We moved it for three. So we're all in for six. Yeah. And I, hey, tell the owner like, hey, we're the, all we are is the management company, but we're going to infill now. And yeah, we're going to sell our home that we yeah. own. You know. And yeah, of course they're happy. So we're all in on this home for six. Sold it for nineteen. Got fifteen hundred bucks down. It's a heavy fixer upper, but like everybody wins there. Yeah. Like the park owner now has you know fifty k boost in value. Yeah, we're in for six, selling for nineteen. Like there, nobody loses, and yeah, in this town, average home price is like two, three hundred, and somebody yeah. bought a home for nineteen thousand, yeah. yeah. interest free with fifteen hundred dollars yeah. down. Question. Mm. Um, so if you're having someone infill, yeah, uh, rehab homes for you, or letting someone come in and do that, um, how do you stop them from just becoming a Lonnie dealer who controls eight of your units, for example? Because that'll fuck you up on an exit. Yeah. So will it be like, hey, if you're gonna come in and RTO, you have the RTO for at max three years. Mm -hmm. Is that something you do? Or you just say, hey, listen, if you're gonna come in here, I need you to instant sell and you could only get up to like three of them at a time. Yeah, yeah. it's just people that, uh, like, yeah, I only do with a couple people. Because yeah. because the set confines for the operators listening, mm -hmm. if you're trying to sell a park, let's say you have a 30 unit park and there's someone who controls 10 units in your community, you're gonna have a very mm -hmm. tough time exiting that park. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah, and I think it's like, even with like all parts of the business, like. Now, like, I'm just more selective. Like, could probably do this with a thousand different people. Yeah. But, like, yeah, like, I love working with Spencer, so we do it together. Yeah. I'm, like, telling my brother. I told Jade. Like, I didn't even realize you guys were, like, actually connecting this close and stuff. I thought you guys were just first crossing pads over this. When uh, you go through a mobile home park transaction, you, there's a bond it, it that break, connects. It breaks a man. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen me at my lowest of lows. <laughs> no, but I told Jade, like, my brother, everybody. Like, I'm like, hey, guys, like, look at what you're making. It's, like, your monthly salary that you're making through sand dollar. Yeah. I'll give you a home. Sell it, make 500 bucks yeah, a month on the spread. Yeah, just get this filled for me. I'm like, imagine <laughs> if you guys did a ton of those. I mean, you want to make a salary yeah. or you want to be like partners. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I think like, it's just kind of only dealing with people like as an operator or yeah. like to giving operators the advice. Like I would only do it with people that like, I'm not going to do this like with a stranger. Yeah, you need someone you trust that you know is actually going to execute on it yeah. and get it, get it rehabbed 100%. right. And like approving every the, sale. So yeah. it's like if you're going to buy one from a tenant, like I still want to approve. I want to see like your tenant's background. Yeah, you're going to hit the park. 100%. 100%. Yeah, and I know like Spencer's not going to go out and, you know, in a ten site park, take down eight of them. So like in that tent site park, like I told Jay, like, hey, you could buy two. Yeah, mm -hmm. two at a time. So that way it doesn't become like a long yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. And exactly. then if it's like a problem at sale, we can even tell the yeah. uh, like the, the buyer of yeah. the park. Like, hey, these are technically POHs. Yeah. If you have an issue with like Jade having two, yeah. how about he keeps one and then we'll just turn one over. Like we'll just sell it to you at closing. One yeah. thing I want to break down for listeners. Um, so what we are talking about right now is the types of income in a mobile home park. There's what people pay for rent. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. There's actually two types of rent. This is a very newbie thing, but I know people because I still to this day get questions from sure. guys who are experienced, like multi yeah. guys. Yeah, they don't. They and, don't yeah, they're asking me, "What do you mean POH versus TOH, and what yeah. what do you mean infilling the POHs?" But then, like vacant lots have an infill. I'm like, All right, the, the, what they're talking about is, let's say a mobile home rents for eight hundred dollars a month. There's actually two types of rent in there. It might be four hundred dollars mm. for lot rent, and then the home rents four hundred dollars. Mm. What they're talking about is. As long as they could get the lot rent, they're okay with someone else coming in to rehab that home and get it rentable or sellable. So that way they can get the lot rent. That person coming in to rehab it can make their profits on either the park and home rent or selling the home or whatever. So that just to explain what we're kind of brainstorming. So this might be a new business idea. I'm sorry, guys. I might be stealing this. No, I'm I'm like the biggest believer in this. Because... So many, so much of what I deal with, just from my marketing standpoint, MHP value, maximize mm. your value. I attract top of market mm. people. Yep. Not, not like uh, the wholesaling is the opposite. You're, what do you want to sell? I'll give you this number, but it's cheap enough where you could go. Hopefully, make a little spread yeah. for yourself. Me, it's the opposite. It's like they want this. I'm the one who sets their expectations, the reality, and then I eventually try and get them down to the yeah. like top of market pricing still. Yeah. But. Something I come across is if someone's like, hey, I, let's say they want $3 million for the deal. Mm. I'm like, your deal's only worth two five, but I know they have mm. vacant parking homes. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, should I be offering a service? Like, hey, we'll go rehab and fill these for you to get you to $3 million. Yeah, oh, and for sure. that might be like a double, I think like that, a whole he, separate company. Like, No, for sure. I think that or even, like, on how you get paid. <laughs> if it's, like, if it, like, the deal numbers are tight, maybe it's, like, you guys can't come to terms on, like, what you're going to make. It's like, hey, I'll take half of that in cash and I'll take two homes too. Yeah. Like imagine if you had like 20, 30 homes cranking out two, 300 bucks a month in cash flow for yeah. you. Nay, and now you have yeah, 30 rentals and they're sellable. Like it, yeah. it, it's not easy to sell homes in the parks. Cause yeah. like sponsor, you have like a thousand DMS. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is in the grand scheme of things, easy to sell. Yeah. 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 It's not a complicated thing. You yeah. slap it on Facebook marketplace and some other. Yeah. It's easier to sell a home than a mobile home park. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. You know, but yeah, I mean with, with, with what you're saying, I, I understand what you're talking about when you're dealing with the seller who thinks it's worth three, yeah. really worth two, five. And they, but to get it to three, they need to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. But then it's like, if I offer. But it's a separate business. I understand that. And I, I think it just depends on what you, you want to do and you know, the, the bandwidth. Yeah. I'm just, know? yeah. Yeah. Like, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Cause so, I'm yeah. thinking if, if my company's slogan is maximize your MHP value, if I was someone that actually came in and maximize their value. You, yeah. I well, could, that that yeah, actually goes I, with the marketing. I, I, already I could, too. I could, yeah, yeah, definitely. I can definitely see that. I mean, and for me, you know, obviously on the wholesale mm-hmm. side, it's different because like you said, I'm trying to get, okay, what price do you want? I'm trying to get to this price because that's what makes sense for a buyer. And then there's spread. Right. Yeah. And so for me, dude, I'm just a fucking I try to be as real, as real and transparent as possible. Yeah. So, you know, for me, when I'm talking to a seller, obviously I'm on the buyer's behalf and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm underwriting it. And it's like, you know, with Tom, the yeah. deal we're doing right now, mm. it's like, okay, Tom, let's look at facts. Mm. You're 89 years old. Yeah. We're buying this at a seven and a half cap, mm. the way it sits at 225. Yeah, we're so that's, o- that's fair we're, price. That's we're overpaying yeah, for this like, time. Yeah, you are. So if we walk away, mm. yeah, seven and a half caps for that many sites. This is a six-sider in yeah, Sneeds, Florida. No one will ever buy this from you. Yeah. And I literally will yeah, tell he's them. He's eighty-nine, that. yeah. And I'll tell these yeah. people that, and, I, and not in a dick way, but it's trying. You're actually helping these people make the decision <laughs> that hey, this is the right decision. Yeah. You know, and so I think you know, at least as far as when I when I'm looking at valuations and explaining it to people and really trying to break it down to them, mm-hmm. and you really let them know, like, yo, know, this is the best you're gonna get. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. But it is what it is. It's not my fault you didn't take care of your fucking yeah. park. And yeah. imagine like how you were saying now, if somebody wants three and they have ten vacant homes, yeah. I think from your end you could tell them like, hey, each occupied lot you have just says worth is what 40, 40, 40 yeah. a site, yeah, yeah, forty a site, thirty-five a site, yeah, whatever. The shell value of those homes you're gonna get five a site, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. As MHP value, we can come in and imagine if you can occupy those ten. Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, you're like value proposition. So we've had people reach out to us as like, hey, we want to sell. Will you buy? Yeah, this is the price we want. And I'm like, it's not worth that because you have all these vacant homes. And I'm like, how about, will you just manage it? Yeah. Because, like, yeah, like, hey, they want, we want to stabilize. I'm like, we're not going to stabilize it for 5%. Yeah. I'll take a piece of equity and we'll stabilize yeah. it. But, yeah, I think it's, like, a huge... Yeah, because, like, yeah. That, yeah, it's an interesting point because, yeah, you got my fucking wheels turning because I'm thinking, like, mm-hmm. everyone who's looking to sell it that wants an unrealistic number, they're not, they don't want to put in the effort to infill it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't be selling it. And it's such yeah, a huge they're, they're component. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a great, great such a, like a big component of the business. And I think a lot of people, I'm sure, hit you up. I have people all the time who hit me up, like, "Hey, I saved 25 grand. Like, I want to buy a park." 
like, can you give me something seller finance for that amount down? Yeah. I'm like, not really. But yeah. that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> dude, dude, yeah. when, when people are like, yeah, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a really good buyer. I'm looking for something at a 10 cap on city utilities. I'm like. Direct build. Yeah, direct build. Yeah. You're not my buyer. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, what, for 25 yeah, yeah, you're not yeah, a buyer. That's, that's, like, that's yeah. just my retainer. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what they yeah. are the buyer for is some homes. Yeah. yeah. Like, they'd be better off just going. If they told 100%. me, hey, I want three homes, yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. pick a state. And, like, yeah, because we have vacant homes everywhere because people yeah. move. We're evicting people. We're, we're going to wholesale, wholesale, <laughs> wholesale yeah. the mobile home to them. No, <laughs> I'm like, quick yeah, five we'll grand. just pretty much yeah. give them a while. Yeah. And then, yeah, pay your so money. If I, pay, if I take it for two grand, I flip it this guy for six grand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey. a huge believer in that. Yeah. Man. Like, oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. you're on the operations side. You know the inside. Yeah. There's such a huge separation from the financial dudes, the, oper yeah. the owners, and then the actual uh, operators. Oh, it's it's much like now. The guys who are killing it do both, a.k.a. you, Keel, um, Few other people just not coming top of my head, but yeah, the operators mm -hmm. were oh, also. And especially older. this time of the year, like my brother was just up in Illinois, and mm -hmm. he's like, it got a little chilly at night. Yeah. He's, you know, winter's coming. Yeah. And all oh, these vacant homes, we got to winterize them. Yeah. You know, people are breaking in, pipes are breaking. So like, now's the time to strike. Like, if anybody's listening who, like, I want to, like, get in with an operator, I want to, like, get into the business, yeah. people are going to be, like, giving away vacant homes like candy now. Yeah. If you could prove, like, I'm going to come in there. I'm going to pay law rent right away. Yeah. I'm going to get this thing sold for you. Because, yeah, like a vacant home in the winter doesn't go from like a neutral. Yeah. Now it's like a huge liability. Yeah. Because that pipe's going to burst. burst yeah. It's going to be the week of, in between Christmas and New yeah, Year's. Yeah, yeah. Like how no plumbers are working. Yeah. So you're like, let yeah. me take over the home. I'll weatherize it and everything. Make sure it's not going to be. Yeah. yeah. And you get a free house. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. it's everybody wins. Man, that's interesting stuff. This is super valuable information. No, by yeah. the way, I, like I, I use well, it's it on, such a unique perspective. Yeah, unique perspective because I'm I'm not dealing with operators a lot of time. Yeah, yeah it's very. And, and very I've always been like, I want like everybody who works for me. Like I want them to make money. Like I want my friends to make money. Yeah. And this has been like the easiest way. Yeah. So like we are all gonna win together. Yeah. Like, I want to go out to dinner, celebrate. Like hey, yeah. that home I gave you for free. You, you boosted our grand, value 50, but you yeah. made 20 grand. Everybody won. Yeah. Like, now you're you know. paying for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got dinner. Yeah. So, yeah, Armand's yeah. paying tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, take it easy, yeah. boys. Take it easy. <laughs> um, question now. Yep. Uh, last couple questions just on your, to cap off your story. Um, and I know we can, I, by the way, I want to have you on to talk about like watch more. Like, yeah, for sure. Stuff, but just to yeah, overarch it. Yeah, no, no, with Spencer. Spencer's a regular guest. We're your current <laughs> co-host, baby. He's here no matter what. Yeah, yeah. He's a, <laughs> a resident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the uh, all right. So when you look at a deal, what's kind of the biggest thing? Are you looking like can I double its value in three years, five years? Like what's kind of what? Like what's your if what's your like real like big sniff test? Cap rate driven. Yeah. What is it? I think right off the bat, it's like what what value? Yeah, what can go wrong? Like why yeah. shouldn't we buy this? Okay. Like everybody is like it's exciting. It's a new deal. So it's like what can go wrong? What don't we like about this? Yeah. Like yeah, that looking up the park, looking up the city. Like a lot of cities hate parks. Yeah. So it's like, what, yeah, what can go wrong? Yeah. Um, so I think it's just a lot of that. Right away, like calling the city, like, hey, we're looking at buying XYZ yeah. Park. Is the city on board with it? Yeah. Or yeah. Right? So I yeah. think it's just like at this point, like, it's so, we're so stressed, like, so overwhelmed. You know, we joke, like, oh man, it's torture. But like, at this point, it's like, we don't want to take on anything that, like, is we know for sure going to be like a problem. Yeah. And if it is like a really rough turnaround park, like, it really has to be worth it. So I would say, like, right now, we're probably most driven by just, like, no more brain damage. Yeah. Second is, like, not, like, is it too good to be true, but, like, what is the worst thing that can happen here? Yeah. And then um, third, I would say it's kind of pro forma. Like, what does this look like when we're done? Yeah. Like, I hate the, like, what does it look like today? Because whatever we're buying, we're never buying anything. Yeah, you're always like, buying something to add value. That's why I try yeah. to explain to people that don't own a lot, like, just from broker, and I'm like... Like, everything you're saying is like, are you trying to buy a stabilized asset or you want to make money? Like, yeah. And I even say, like, a lot of it, people are so caught up on the day one. Yeah. But by day 90. Yeah. So people are, like, shocked by how much value you can add right away. Yeah. So if we're, like, looking at a deal, just say it's 20 sites yeah. in, yeah, Iowa. Okay. What are the rents now? The park on homes, et cetera. Yeah. We're going to do a rent raise. So if you're doing, like, a $50 raise day one, I mean, you're already adding a ton of value yeah. by that 90th day. Yeah. All right, there's four vacant homes. We're going to sell them. Yeah. It's like 40, 80, now you're 160 more in value of four homes right there. Yeah. So I really don't like the whole like day one. Yeah, it, I, I agree. It too. Matters, I think 100%. But, yeah. 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 No, I agree. I would never, like if I was going to buy something right now, I would never look at anything that was day one returns because it's like, well, then well, yeah. what's the value at? Well, and, yeah. the, and the thing is too, is like a wholesaler or someone that is, you know, valuing that. Yeah. It's like really understanding yeah. what 
from wholesaling, right? Isn't it crazy how stupid buyers are sometimes? You're like, dude, you're going to make a ton of money on this deal. What do you mean it's a too low of a cap rate day one? Like, right, what, what exactly. are you talking about? The and rents are 300 well, below market. Again, yeah. why you get tire kickers? Like the last podcast I think we did. Like um, people, people would rather buy something at a 10 cap with no upside than an 8 cap but $300 of upside in rents. It, 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 like, exactly. It's like, how delusional are you? Right. Yeah. Like, it, it, exactly. And, you know, and like, 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 I was, like the last podcast yeah. we did, you know, I got so many people hit me up. Yeah. Like, I want to buy a park. I got a park. I got a yeah. on Jimmy in the car. Like, look at these fucking guys on LinkedIn. Like, hit me up for yeah. shit. And I'm, and I, you would think they don't want to hit you up because you're talking about some massive fees there. And it's he like, was stone cold. This guy had about 30 <laughs> haze in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, look, I mean, but, but, but for, like, re- for real, for me, it's, I really found the niche in like having four or five solid people, yeah. like investors, like a Jimmy. Yeah. You know, and the joke, the joke that I always had with, with, with like people I talked to about it, I'm just like, man, I just need like four more Jimmy's, you know, <laughs> in my life. But because, but because I understand what he's saying. And so as a wholesaler, knowing what Jimmy wants, and that makes my life so much easier because yeah. I talk to a park owner every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's not necessarily like, oh, hey, like, oh my God, I found a deal. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. What's Jimmy going to do with this? Like, what's the true valuation of this based on what Jimmy wants? And it's just been easy to, like, easy yeah. to work together. Well, it, yeah, yeah, you and, get and, it. And, and that's the like, other yeah. thing. But, like, when I'm not looking at the value of a deal, I'm not looking at, like you said, day one. I'm looking at, okay, what will Jimmy do with this? Got it. That's, this is the value, though. Yeah, because, like, that 10 site that we talked about, like, so many people would have passed on that. Like, it's all POHs. What, what are you doing here? But it's like, hey, like, there, there's POHs running for 300 bucks. Yeah. We're getting $600 a lot run. Mm-hmm. But people are caught up on like, oh my god, it's three hundred dollar POHs. There is no lot run, like. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. But knowing that Jimmy, okay, Jimmy's gonna sell out the home, he's gonna recoup this back, and then and then yeah. I, and then like, okay, yeah, you so, know you know how to accurately value a park, right? Home, it's which, like okay, ninety percent of our industry doesn't. We buy it for do. five. There's ten park owned homes there. He's gonna sell them for fifteen a piece. So it's one hundred and fifty bat off the cash yeah. basis. He's gonna have so it's, it's really a three hundred, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollar value of the park because he got one hundred fifty. It's back all yeah, cash easy basis. math. Yeah. And then six hundred dollar lot rent goes six. Okay, great. It's a, it's worth yeah. eight hundred grand. Doubles the money. And, yeah, we're, and we're not Jimmy, really doing anything that takes like 10 years to do. Like everything yeah. we're doing is like a it's one to quick. two year at most. Yeah. That's what's super impressive about him. It's yeah. like, you know how to pick those <laughs> specific. Like, hey man, got a, got a deal in uh, Sneeds 25 minutes literally from my house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been there more than me. It's like, I don't leave the garage. Like, yeah. I don't leave my office. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, I was like, holy shit. It's like, yeah. You're always in the lab, bro. Just yeah, like, yeah, you got, dude. You, like, got the, you got the headset on. I got the headset I'm in the lab, bro. And so it's like, oh, I'll be, you know, I've been in Pensacola like eight times. I'm like, it's so funny. Like oh, we, it would be like a funny show. Like we can do like me and Jade do it like as a game, like with yeah. pictures. He'll like send me a billboard. Yeah. And he's like, where is that? I'm like, yeah, that's 10 minutes outside of Atlanta airport. Because <laughs> we've just, <laughs> oh, yeah, we've yeah. just everywhere. been everywhere I yeah, feel. Like, so you know, like, okay, I know what's Yeah, he'll send me like a picture of a drink. And I'm like, I know. I like, know what state you're in. Yeah. Yeah. The, you're in the Midwest do, yeah. for sure. Yeah. They do the big cube there, yeah. but it's round. I top of the table. I'm like, you're in downtown Des Moines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is like, hilarious. And it's just like, especially him. Yeah, like, he is just like, he sees so much. Uh, like, yeah. And he knows too. It's like a lot of places. I'm like, hey, what do you think about there? And he's like. Well, no, like southeastern Missouri, like people don't want to buy; they only want to rent. Yeah, like you just really do. It's just learning yeah. by just doing it. Exactly, yeah. and it, it's so funny because, like, as a wholesaler, and especially as I call myself a virtual wholesaler, I'm so opposite. <laughs> Dude, you, you guys like want... Jimmy would be like, "You got a video of it," and I'm like, "Fuck!" That means I gotta get my car, <laughs> go 30 minutes up the road. <laughs> like, Dude, fuck, you, okay. you know, the, you guys want to know something funny? So I actually lost business doing. Uh, Vlogs, I mean, mm. uh, podcasts with wholesalers, like old school real estate agents. Hate it. Yeah. Hate wholesalers. And mm. what I don't understand, mm. it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> like, it is just, not. Uh, switching subjects. Legal like, disclaimer, it is not. I'm right, not like, a licensed, on paper, actually, licensed and everything. One guy's flip I'm selling a, li- a contract. The other yeah. guy's selling I'm a licensed shit. broker in the state of Iowa. <laughs> so technically, I'm a broker. A lot so. of Iowa like, talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of yeah. Iowa talk. I appreciate it, guys. Iowa, I, yeah. Great state. It keeps us up at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not me, a good trust one. Me, these, <laughs> these three Iowa dudes are keeping me up at night. Right? Well, not for long. <laughs> not for long. Then they're going to be keeping Jade up at night. Yeah. The, yeah. um, like what I feel like what's hilarious about middlemaning deals, whether it's wholesale or brokering, dude, like I get people asking me like, is this a wholesale deal or broker deal when I send an off market thing? I'm like, I always respond to them like, what the fuck is, is the difference? Ma- underwrite it. Give e- it get back. Yeah. To me. Tell yeah. me what the price is. Either way, I'm getting a spread, whether it's from you or the seller. So like mm-hmm. someone's paying my fee, you either want the it, deal or not, buddy. Like tell someone me. will pay the fee. <laughs> like, all right. You don't you like, all, yeah. you don't like a broker deal. I'll go talk to the seller, get him to sign a piece of paper. I think it's, it's just a like, whole, yeah. it's a, it's just like yeah. an old school thing. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's definitely the mindset, an old school so. thing. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's really unfortunate too. Cause it's like, if you look at 
and, I, and like I said, it's an old school thing, but I think it's kind of like a mid, like a middleman, you know, hey, you know, as a broker, make a couple hundred grand a year type deal. But if you look at like the largest companies in the world, like Blackstone, mm. they literally wholesaled Sam Zell's shit. It's just a fancier way of saying it when they bought his massive port- portfolio, mm. the commercial portfolio. They literally sold half of the shit before they closed over the weekend. Mm. It's like that's a wholesale, it's an M&A, it's a wholesale deal. You don't need a license to do it. And it's like, you know, like, yeah, I took the classes. I, I've been a broker for nine years. It's just, you know, it's just different, you know? I, I don't know. That might have been my lighter. Yep, my lighter. Oh, I was like, I hope something didn't break. <laughs> but it, but <laughs> my it, chair's going down. Yeah, By the way, guys, this is a brand new podcast studio set up in the last 48 hours. Thank yes, you guys for being my go. first guest. It's working. Yeah. yeah, I love it. It's great. I, yeah, dude, I, guys, it's going to be a good look after because we're going to have the camera cuts and everything. It'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, I, at the end of the day, like, it, you know, <clears> I'm more than happy to, you know, pay like like we've talked about man it's like we do a deal together i'm gonna pay like and we talked about this in the car it's like you provide like we'll pay you i have no problem splitting yeah. a deal i have no problem yeah. jv'ing a deal like where it's all win together and all like like smooth yeah. these deals and like the only person you're hurting at the end of the day is your, your yourself and your your buyer mm-hmm. if you're a broker and you're saying i'm not going to do that deal for my buyer because you're a wholesaler it's like well, so yeah it's ridiculous okay you're hurting your client or if you're a seller you're hurting the seller. So, like, at the end of the day, like, let's just... Yeah, dude, when a, when a broker's like, I, I don't want to do the deal because it's a wholesale, it's like, so you don't want to get paid? Like, I'm... Yeah, I'm like, right. huh? <laughs> like, and like it, your and buyer pro- doesn't give a shit. Probably, I'm compensating you 50%. 50%. What do you and, mean you don't want to do that? And probably more than what you'd have been compensated anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, I don't know. Get over it. The mm-hmm. All right, questions for you, Spencer. So, coming from... There's been a lot of updates and changes with... Yeah. What you doing? By the way, anyone who hasn't listened to it, the first episode I did with Spencer, it's probably my favorite conversation today oh, for sweet. the podcast. Yeah. This today might beat it because I got yeah, the double yeah, whammy, yeah. two fucking studs. <laughs> yeah. So um but I know back then, mainly in the MH side, and you're starting to phase back into residential wholesale. My mm-hmm. question being, and I know we talked about like off camera just together, what was the reason to transition to incorporating more residential sides? I know a couple things were just a lot more consistency of volume instead mm-hmm. of like having these three to six month transaction timelines. You have thirty days, <laughs> yeah. fifteen for, days. Where they're not three. Four, yeah, they're <laughs> never, <laughs> four months for six grand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that, that's a crazy one. That's we said at the end of the day, I'm the six grand deal. Yeah. We're probably making like four bucks an yeah. hour from yeah. the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Should have had my VA do it. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The so. What was the reasoning for getting more back into the residential space? And then what are some advantages you see from the wholesale of mobile home parks? And then I have a few comments on it that I actually did want to share. Mm-hmm. Just because from my point of view on the brokering side and mm-hmm. some debates I actually have versus brokering versus wholesaling. I actually think brokering mobile home parks is much more uh, much more like successful of a strategy because... Mm-hmm. You buy yourself more time mm-hmm. for things to go wrong, which 100%. I know is something that affected the wholesale, which is why you're incorporating the residential. So, like, what what brought you to incorporate the residential? What are the benefits and drawbacks of each that you sure. see? I mean, I think you know, obviously. And granted, just also the prefaces. He's very advanced at the residential game, so he yeah, also okay. you also it's are been very my bread and yeah. For you're nine very years good at getting a prior. deal in yeah. resi. So like, it, your average person doing a resi deal gets like what, like two, three grand on a wholesale deal. That ain't Spencer. Yeah, well, Spen- I mean, Spencer's a pro at it. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and I've been I was a licensed agent and broker for nine years prior to getting into yeah. the space. You know, cold calling headsets, blah blah blah. Go back to the last episode, learn my origin story. Yeah, but you know, the the reason for the transition was solely. Um, just a business play, you know. I I, would, I came from a point which I talked about in the last episode where I just I was trying to figure out what my next move was. Yeah, and I fell into it. You know, I was essentially like I was telling Jimmy in the car right over. I was essentially getting into trying to get into multifamily investing. So, you know, I, I fell into it accidentally. I mean, I, I I was cold calling multifamily properties, trying to figure out like a sub two, pace morbi method of zero yeah. down and find a you know diamond in the rough. And yeah. I called it mobile home park. Fell into it, and it was like yo. Uh, I think this is a decent deal and yeah. let me call some people and ended up just starting to turn deals that way. And, yeah. you know, and, but it's not, a, in my opinion, it's very difficult to build a company from that unless you're doing the management and ownership side like Jimmy's yeah, doing. Cause it, there's so much, there's so much gap in, in between deals in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that was the problem I ran into. Now it's a different game because it's obviously more established, but sure. And that comes with the broker side, yeah. but the wholesaling side, nobody's Googling. Yeah. You can't be as wide. Spencer pop- Davidson yeah, wholesaler. You, yeah, you, hey, you, know, yeah, you can't be as public with the marketing. Well, it, I it, wouldn't it, wish it upon my worst enemy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I, I always say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and so, like, you, there's marketing things you can do, yeah. like mailers, things like that, to bring in yeah. park business. Yeah. 
But, you know, there's only so many deals that he can buy. There's yeah. only so many deals. That, I mean, fuck, he's bought 93. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you're fucking buying stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and I've got he's a, like, and it's our 17th closing this year. I'm like, yo, chill out. All right? <laughs> yeah, dude, Leave like, some deals for the rest of us. Right, life. right. And I, and I really came to the come to the Jesus meeting room uh, moment of my life, like in the business. I'm like, I think I could maybe do between 12 and 20 of these deals a year. But that's not my goal. My yeah. goal is not to, I mean, I, I, I realized that I could probably do a million dollars a year just doing this. Yeah. But that's not my goal. I want to build a company. I want to build a business. And so then I looked at the other outlets of what I was doing, and I realized that the residential side provides much more of a business. Yeah, it's a mo way more systematic. The cash to conversion is 30 days, yeah. right? I, I spend a dollar on marketing. Yeah. I can close on a deal Capture within 30, quick, yeah. you know, 21 to 30 days because yeah. it's, it's, it's a residential deal. Closings happen a lot faster. It's one deal, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And so then it was like, okay, there's an actual business here, yeah. you know? And then, you know, basically finding the right mentors in that space who are doing millions and millions and millions, you know, between yeah. three and $10 million a year in that space and really latching onto their circles and being like, what are you doing? Yeah. They explain it to me because they thought yeah. it was all fast. They're like, dude, you're doing what? You're doing parks? How yeah. do you wholesale a fucking park? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah that's, you can't they, system, these are guys, it's hard these, to systemize. Yeah, these, yep. these are guys doing 10 million a year in residential wholesale deals, virtually. Yeah. Not, you know, boots on the ground, virtually from an yeah. office, you know, 30 yeah. acquisition, met, you know. Because it, it's, it's way more systematic because you could determine ARVs and values on the fly versus the fly. mobile home parks with so many factors like he's talking about. It's actually yeah. really funny. Thousands. Yeah. It's yeah. really funny because I'm in this coaching group with this guy. And like I said, they just exited their, their wholesale business for like 12 million. Yeah. And now they're going heavy on the coaching space. And I was in the I was in the code Zoom call, and I'm like, God dang, guys! Like, how the fuck do you underwrite a single family house? They're like, What do you mean? Yeah, I'm like, Seventy percent ARV. Well, they were, well, but, but, yeah. I'm like, but I'm like, How do you determine ARV? How do we? You know? And it's funny. And the guy's looking at me he's like, Don't you underwrite fucking mobile home parks? Like, how they're so like, different. And, 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 and yeah. I'm, so I'm sitting here, and I'm like, Fuck, go back to the broker days. Blah blah blah. Anyways, long story short, I figured that piece out. But again how many millions of homes are in the United States? Yeah. And so, and how many parks, right? Yeah. The, and, and so ownership yeah, of 40, a park. Yeah. yeah, ownership of a park makes sense. Supply is is, is yeah. getting down lower but and demand is getting higher. Transaction volume is not But transaction there, volume yeah. is not there. And so I think, you know, it's always going to be a part of my business. I can yeah. always do, you know, 12 to 20 parks a year. Potentially 20 would be a stretch. Yeah. But, you know, like this year, I think I'll probably end up at like 17. Nice. Unless we can close a couple more and then, yeah. you know, sprinkle some in there, which we're, we're pushing. Yeah. But the residential side, it's like, man, I can really build a business from this. And so now it's, <clears throat> it's you know, spending a shit ton on marketing, yeah. you know, and getting leads piled in every day, hitting phones, yeah. you know, and trying to get that, like, actual business built of yeah. cash to conversion cycles. You know, what, what, what is my cash flow every month? Like, yeah. actually building a company and then bringing on salespeople. So if you are looking for a sales position, I'm actively hiring, aggressively hiring. Yeah. To, to, to then build a company to then where I can actually scale up into a leadership position. Yeah. And then, you know, there's so many different phases. I'm in phase one right now. I'm in build mode of the wholesaling business. Yeah. Phase two, the brokerage side. Phase three, you know, there's so many things I want to do in yeah. this same space. But for now, right now, yeah, I just saw much more, a clear path to building an actual company. Yeah. One thing I wanted to talk to you about off camera was like, uh, starting around January, I'm thinking about starting a brokerage. Mm -hmm. And I know you're doing a wholesale, but... I think obviously it's offering the brokerage side of things just to have two different 100%. legs. So like if I'm running like kind of commercial real estate, mobile home park brokerage side of things, you have your wholesale side, but then we can kind of collaborate from the two ends. That might be something we need. A hundred percent. And he's moving here. Yeah, right. He's he's like, he's trying you to get, got, dude, get down here, bro. Dude, <laughs> now that I know I you're his, only an hour away, bro, yeah. we got to link dude, up I all the time. Dude, I was in this neighborhood, and I'm like, yeah. oh, man, the wife would love this. You yeah. know, and then the kid, you know, so yeah, it's, it's. Well, yeah, I mean, when you got a three story house in the water with a boat, and blacked out, that's class. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she'd love it. You know what I'm saying? You know, tennis courts, you know. Yeah, so my final question how much money do you make? Yeah, right. Off camera. Pull up your bank account. Yeah. All right, guys, on three, everyone's business checking accounts. All I'll tell you is six grand next week. Yeah. Phone died. Fuck. Right. Uh, no, actually, twelve because they're putting on black tonight. Oh yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah, as far as like the brokerage stuff, yeah, there's definitely a vertical. I'm already testing it in in, in uh, a couple markets. Yeah. So I'm like I said, I'm a licensed broker in Iowa. Yeah. So my uh, my non compete just ended. Cool. So, so you I am free range. Shops already getting started in Iowa. Cool. Um, oh, so you're bringing it back already back home? Yeah, because you you already got it. You got people 100%, out there. You, yeah. 100. And so that's really what's going to change the game from what I'm doing to what every other wholesaler is already doing as well, is already yeah. have that. Because look, if you look at the new laws of wholesaling, you need to be licensed. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and, and I so know like South Carolina now, they're not. Iowa, they're like Pennsylvania, it's like you have to have a license, quote unquote, and not commercial, hmm. residential. Commercial is yeah. different, it's completely different. I do think, um, I think a wholesaling eventually is gonna go away. Mm. Because I don't think so in the commercial space. 
Yeah, Remember, I think because com- it, it's the same thing as MA. I think commercial, it's just the Wild West, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just because I mean, houses, I could say it. Yeah, yeah residential, you know, they, you know, it's, it's, there's gonna, they're, they're gonna, they're, Gonna have that barrier to yeah. entry. I it's, think it'll just be a separate style of brokerage. It'll yeah. just be rather than the listing approach, people will just be brokering, but kind of the wholesale approach. Well, just well, quick, quick you know, cash. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Type. You know, and, and with what I'm doing, and I'm okay openly saying it because I don't know there's not a lot of people spending the money I'm spending on marketing and things like that. And if you are like, okay, go ahead and try and steal the strategy. But essentially yeah. it's like, you know, I'm spending a lot of money on marketing every month to have inbound leads. Yeah. And if that lead doesn't work for a wholesale deal, I set up a listing appointment. Yeah. For mm-hmm. a part agent partner, yeah. So now I'm getting comp. So those deals, you know, only two out of forty leads are actually a wholesale deal. Yeah. So now I have thirty eight other leads that are still want to actively aggressively sell yeah. their house. And that's where you should hit them with the brokerage side. Yeah. And so I have another vertical of revenue. Yeah. And so really, you know, the goal will be to build out that. Yeah. And and have agents that are like, I wake up every morning and I have listing appointments. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and that's that's what you know the next phase is. But yeah, with the commercial side, the same thing. I've hit you up a, a couple times. It's like, yo, this this isn't a good deal for me. Yeah, mm. but you should go list it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so that's, you know, that's that's part of that, and I, I, that's kind of what the play is next. But yeah, there, I think there's always gonna be wholesaling in the commercial space. It's the same thing as M and A in any business. It's yeah. like there's always people doing transactions, and there's they're not licensed. Like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah, the um, like the brokerage versus wholesaling. So like the way that I think the commercial space can be systemized is kind of what I'm doing now. So I've gotten away from. I used to be like, hey, I got my four or five buyers. I'm essentially Mm-hmm. calling to find them deals i've gotten away from that and i'm going now i'm like listing based because mm-hmm. yeah, i'm like sure. i could mass market and mass mass market to sellers and then once i have listings it's enough time to mass market to buyers mm-hmm. rather than just trying to quick slam with my direct yeah, relationships 100 so it's more systemizable but yeah the the problem and this is the same problem i ran into we talked about a little in the first podcast like when i went broke after like the first two years well just because i was spending like an idiot um, That'll do it. It was when, rate, yeah, it's when rates went up, and as rates go up, everything falls out of contract. Your next contract, first of all, it'd be probably two to three months to get something under contract, you know, starting from the ground up. And then on top of that, you got a three month transaction time period. So I had like a six month period of I didn't make a dollar when I was overspending, and that was like same drawback. Why you're like I gotta I gotta supplement this with something that's more regular. Well, yeah, <laughs> man. I mean, it's 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 even, that's why I think yeah, well, yeah, the, the, the small like so. I came to the conclusion that, especially in the commercial space, if a fee is like less than twenty five thirty, it almost starts to not make sense because that six, three to six month time period, like you guys are saying, like mm-hmm. six six grand is coming out to be like four dollars an hour. And that's when around, you get under like, contract. Yeah. You don't have the relationship to even yeah. get the get deal. The, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it takes it's, it's over a year. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, it starts to not make sense when you get the smaller. And like, what I'm trying to figure out right now is how to optimize my marketing for larger deals because since I'm mass marketing, it's like. Maximize your mobile home park value. If you need help selling your park, come to me. But the problem is people, mm-hmm. the people who need help selling their parks isn't the 120 unit in a major MSA. It's the 30 unit in a small And I think there's market. also so, like, the parks are getting so dried up. And I think we've talked a lot too, about yeah. that. But there's a lot of markets. Like, I have my database. And you pick a big city. And, like, I know every park in that city. Yeah. And there's nothing that's mom and pop. Yeah. So now nothing, at least for, like, the yeah. wholesale side, nothing's ever going to yeah. sell. Yeah, so that's why the, the brokerage side is mm-hmm. more sustainable long yeah. term because once once the, not institution, but once sophisticated investors come around to selling, they're just going to relist with the licensed yeah. broker, not the wholesale. I mean, and there's a reason like. most of my deals are in the same area. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. not going to re- tell people where that area is because fuck you. <laughs> but, you know, there's a reason. You know, they're Come all on, bro, the- drop some bombs for the uh, viewers. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, yeah. I, think, I think I agree with you on that, but I also think that you just, you know, Especially on the listing side, as a, as a residential agent on the listing yeah. side, I mean that was the key, right? You, you know, I could handle fifteen listings at a time. Yeah, because you, you could get you're you're yeah. Not there, there's more automated marketing out there, aka it's on market. Yeah, there's there's websites. Well, and, and that's yeah. the MLS, but like even with the brokerage, so like why it's easier for me to sell a listed deal because honestly, Crexy's algorithm automatically pushes your deal to people mm-hmm, mm-hmm, without yeah. you having to actually work. Meanwhile, wholesale, wholesale, you got to hammer work, the phone. Hammer the yeah. phones. You got to display, you got to sell the yeah. deals, you know? And, and like, you know, obviously on the, re- and again, that comes back to why I went to residential yep. more because there's, there's softwares, investor lift. It, what, a, what's a, what's a realistic, sorry to cut you off. No, okay. I'm very curious on this um, as you go deep in it. What is like the average like wholesale fee on a, a typical resi? I know you do good ones that are like 20, 25, but like what's like 20, a typical? 22. Right. That was Okay, so you're fucking you're hitting That's big, average. you're hitting big swings on resi. Big swings. Yeah. And what's yeah. your what's the average deal size? Like three hundred thousand dollar house? No. Two hundred? Two. Okay. Like 
We still look it up. Well, yeah, I mean, I look. I mean, I look at anything. You know, like I, I just did a deal in Iowa. Yeah. You know, locked it up for a hundred. I'm gonna sign up for one twenty. Wow. You know what I mean? So, but the ARV is two ten. Yeah. And it's you know I I, I know what it needs to go into it. Yeah. So it's like, the and and the best. You know, that doesn't mean I won't do a seventy five hundred dollar deal. Yeah, I've done those. Well, obviously, you know, you're, you're trying to optimize for bigger. Not yeah, yeah. And, and and it comes back to relationships. Like yeah. I have no, I have like, you know how to speak Iowa. It, well, I know how to speak <laughs> yeah. Iowa. Well, and, and that was such a, that was such a no brainer market for yeah. me because I've been selling. You know, it for so yeah, long. you know that's know a good it, neighborhood. That's a bad like, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like I'm in Jacksonville as well, and I have relationships now with guys that I'm like every time I get a deal. I'll take a little mm-hmm. less off the fee because I know they're going to close it. I know mm-hmm. the relationship's good. Yeah. Like, I'm good yeah, with that. Just keep it going. Just yeah. keep it going. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's a, I know they'll close in 21 days. I know, yeah. they'll, you know, I know they're good for it. I know they're going to pay for, you know, yeah. I, I won't have to deal with any bullshit. And that's why in like the part business and wholesaling yeah. commercial, it's like, fuck, I have my, I have my handful of buyers and I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, good. The, I, yeah. And you can lose perks over so many things. I mean, I've lost yeah, perks so many over. so diligence items to go wrong. Oh uh, yeah. 999 yeah. are good. But the sewer lines are fucked. And they that, need to be that, replaced. That twenty-five thousand dollars capex item kills the deal. Yeah, you can't get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that, and, and that's why I think like the commercial, you gotta, you have to do like kind of bigger fees, or else it starts to not make sense. Because for every five deals, if, if three to four fall apart, you need yeah. to have a big one to kind of make up for all that time. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. The you know another thing that's like a, I think a flaw with wholesaling and commercial. Why I think this is why you don't see wholesaling that widespread in commercial like you do residential is that. In Resi, someone who's a homeowner who needs to move because their job's in a different state or something, they have to sell mm. by this time frame, which means there's an opportunity. Like, they're willing to let it go for a discount. The motivation because they have is to. so much harder. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to say. Someone with a cash-flowing asset really never has to sell. Yeah. It's just they're just tired no, of that No, because, yeah, flow. you look at anything, like divorce, death, yeah. they're moving. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. So it's so. much more systematic because you just have to target enough people. Enough people have life problems where they need to sell. Yeah. That's where the wholesaler actually solves a problem you want commercial. Why I think wholesaling is not sustainable. It's sustainable right now in mobile home parks, but that's because we have these really bad operators that are mom uh, pops. I don't, even, I don't even think it is sustainable. It's not. It's like, not. Yeah, because as they go away, a sophisticated operator does not need a wholesaler because a sophisticated operator, 90% of the time, is not in a desperate position to sell other than, oh, it's the end of our investment cycle. I need to return capital to the investors. Mm. Let me see which broker wants to shop it. Then it's like, oh, you don't need a wholesaler yeah. anymore. Yeah. But even like a lot of our deals have been not really necessarily wholesale deals, but like we did a deal with a seller. His buddy owns a park an hour away. Hey, here's this guy. Oh, connect, yeah. And like we're getting like maybe a 5% kind yeah. of discount off the price yeah. just because it's no broker. There's this, there's yeah. that. Yeah. But they're not, it's not like how it used to be. Yeah. We're like, yeah, you're going and kind of scooping stuff up for half of what it's worth it yeah. really is more i've been saying for years now yeah i mean the parks are really drying up just because there's so few of them like yeah. look here in tampa do you guys do any calling here or? i don't i, I do you know. well first of all i actually am 100 percent not cold calling based which is very controversial but yeah it's working um but yeah i said do you guys do any marketing in tampa Almost none. Like, yes. I don't focus on it. Like, yeah, same yeah. here. And we live here. Makes no, yeah, we live yeah, here. It yeah. makes no sense because yeah. everyone's getting cold called 20 times a day. Mm-hmm. And, or it's just already owned by you people. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been funny. But there's been times before. Well, I'll get a call from Spencer when, back when he was in parks. Yeah. And then I've obviously have his number saved. Yeah. So I get the call from, he calls the park number that he yeah. saw. Yeah. And then it forwards to myself. Yeah. So I'll pick up like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. And he'll be like, a, what? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is like, this is Jimmy. Yeah. Like, what's up? And he's like, oh, fuck. I'm, I'm calling yeah. a park. I'm like, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, it's me. Uh, yeah. I didn't fucking know it was his park. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm like, cold calling. It's it. We go, shit. I'm like, want to sell it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's just not money out there. Yeah. Like, no. if, I bet in Tampa, there's less than five mom and, ho- mom and pop parks that are like still left. And, yeah. and, and they're holding on because they know 100. Yeah, they're holding on because they know 100 plus yeah. K. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is, 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 and likely, we know who yeah. the, the guy that's right by the stadium, what's his name? Uh, Walt. Walt, yeah. crazy guy. He's holding out. Uh, well, all three of dudes. us have called him probably. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. multiple times. And like, him, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, um, man, yeah, it's funny stuff. The, how many? Uh, how quickly was it for you to just jump right back into residential wholesale? Very easy transition, right? Because it's so much. The the programs are cheaper. It's way easier to get phone numbers for a dialer. Because Reonomy honestly sucks for commercial. Like honestly, yeah. every phone number's wrong. But like in yeah. Resi, it's easier to buy lists, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a similar process to to MH. Yeah. You know, it's it's. Uh, you, you know, I was thankful. Thankfully, just had the money to spend on marketing. So. You know, I've got my call center in Pakistan that is pumping me 
two leads a day, I have four callers, eight, eight, ten leads a day, and cool. I skip, skip trace the list. And, yeah. You know, they're killers over there. And, and it's four kids calling, too. <laughs> yeah, and, four, yeah. And, yeah, and then my four it's children. has got the four eight-year-olds. Yeah, yeah, you know. I said follow up, damn it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to eat tonight, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's getting hot on there. It's getting hot. Bro, that garage. Turn, that turn garage. the air conditioning down. That, I knew it was in the garage. That garage is yeah. hot as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have that fan on full blast. But, yeah, yeah you know, I mean, it was, it was pretty simple. I used the same systems. But yeah. the thing was, is when I sold the residential real estate, I did the same thing. Yeah. I was just calling as a listing agent, so yeah. it was like the transition was easy. It's yeah. like, okay, I use the same CRM I use for parks. I use the same dialer I have. You know, I, I bought it. I actually upgraded my headset, so it's like a sick, you know, head noise canceling headset. So I'm dialing. It's like a true call yeah. center, and you know, I have my script, and and um, you know, the script is is a lot less intensive than a park script. Yeah. You know, I don't need, you know, the, basically it's building rapport you, with you, the seller. You don't need fancy language and understand no, different, hell no. different terminology and hell shit. No. And it's, and it's, and it's like, I don't, you know, and the biggest thing is like I mentioned earlier is so many people are just afraid of getting price and, and offering, you know, and it's yeah. like, I know this is a numbers game. So, you know, I mean, I literally posted it the other day. It's like this guy wanted 175 K for his house. I offered him 77. But then I told him the truth and why it's worth that and then yeah. why he needs to sell it. Yeah. You know, because he had a big pain and motivation, you know. And so it's just, yeah, you got to have your systems processes in place. And I think anybody that's watching this that wants to get into it, it's just like, just fucking do it. Yeah. I don't know. Like, well, that's a bit, that's the biggest thing to do. Quit like, watching this shit and do yeah, it. Yeah, you're like, some, fuck. So many people are so bad at just taking action on things. Like, we all probably have drastic, I mean, ultimately, it's processes are all similar, but we have different processes. They all work. It's mm. just, who does it? <laughs> you no, know? And I think even on this, like, if somebody really wanted to take action, they could call Spencer and start calling uh, residential. For him, and or, if they don't know what to do, just bring it to him. Or they, they could, yeah, yeah. I'll give him a vacant home in a park. Like, yeah. it's just, like, even here on this, like, there's so much, I think, opportunity yeah. out there. And I'll always tell people, like, just go on Google. Yeah. Just Google mobile home parks and whatever mm -hmm. city you live in. Yeah. Google's just going to auto-populate, yeah. like, whatever, 10, 20 clothes. Just call those. Yeah. And if you, there's no number, just hop in the car, drive to this park, yeah, so there, call number the number on the, on the sign. Yeah. And literally, like, like the guy Josh who works with me now, he um he came to me. He just he was a resi guy, and he mm -hmm. just cold called mm -hmm. mobile home parks after watching a podcast and downloading my guide. And yeah. He came to me with a deal. It was for literally in the first week of him working for me, mm -hmm. he made twenty seven grand. Yeah. yeah. It's like he just took action. It's yeah. crazy that people yeah. just don't yeah. take action. Yeah. They, and they never will. The people that are yeah. watching this, you never will. Um, the, yeah. There's a few that will, but the, the rest won't. They'll, yeah. just continue. they'll wait for the next episode and the next episode. Yeah. Next thing you know, and the next program and the next idea. And then yeah, they'll, do it, they'll like, do it for oh, two hey, days. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do wholesale. Oh, now yeah. I'm going to yeah. do fucking. The hardest is the first one. You do the first yeah. one and then you're. The, the rest is history. Yeah. This is a good transition because you were talking a bit on processes. I'm curious about deferring processes mm -hmm. among us three. So, like, let's say finding owners, right? So, you like pulling mass lists from Reonomy and then dialers. With cold caller VAs, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. I know there's secret sauce in there, but that's that's yeah, the just the dumb it down. Yeah, I just just pull just pull all the data you can yeah. find uh, and skip trace the data. Yeah. Pay the money to skip trace it, you know. So you're not calling yeah. eight, you know, ten different numbers. You're like getting the accurate numbers, yeah. uh, and then yeah, just mass dialing yeah. and dialing for dollars. Uh, for, for those listening, I'm a text blast, email blast guy. If you, yeah, you watch which, my channel, you already know that. It, and that's like the next thing is yeah. like I'm 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 now getting into the SMS blasts, yeah. you know, follow up drip campaigns, things like yeah. that. And then like Jimmy said, I mean, dude, the first deals I did, I just I I did exactly what you said. I just, just fucking, fucking drive by the yeah, bro, just call him. Just drive by the park and yeah. call the sign. And then oh, this is the manager. And then it's like oh, okay, I'm a you yeah. know I'm a tenant that wants to you know potentially move. Oh, you know what's can I meet with the owner? And yeah. then boom, next thing you know you're talking about selling the deal. And it's yeah. like yeah, it's not that complicated. Like for a lot of new people listening, it's like. Call, speak to a thousand owners, then get back to me and tell me you're struggling. Mm. If it's, you speak to a thousand owners, I guarantee you would have done the deal. Yeah. yeah. And you should be able to do that in speaking to them, maybe a month. But yeah, because like, you got to reach them. You yeah, got to get in contact with try them. Try them again. Like, a lot of, but if you have a thousand conversations with yeah, the actual like, owners, you probably have done multiple yeah, it's deals. Like, it's like, like what Mosey talks yeah. about in any business. It's like you're either doing a hundred cold calls, yeah. SMS, emails a day, yep. or you're spending hundred days, hundred dollars a day on marketing. Yeah. Pick one. Well, <laughs> if you don't have the money, do the calls. Yeah. The, you know, it's funny and talking about the saturation in the mm. market. So my first metric, my first year in the business, mm. every six owners I reached was a potential seller. And now it's got to be like every 20 owners I reached. Uh, for sure. Yeah. But like, yeah, this is, this is only three and a half, four years ago. Like, yeah. I, I remember like clearly like if I hit six people today, I will have a seller. And I, I was able to do it like every week I would have five BOVs because I'm like, I need to just reach six a day. And I would literally every yeah. single day average a new seller, average yeah. a new seller, average mm -hmm. a new seller. Yeah. And like yeah. now, bro, it's like I'm sending 
thousands upon thousands of text blasts, still doing the cold calls surrounding current listings, mm. have two other guys cold calling with me, and it's yeah. like, dude, it is not easy to find deals no. now and compared to three, four years ago. Oh, like you're no. Talking about. Yeah, I mean, six years and ago. The Tampa three. was cool until this guy started cold calling it like six months ago, right before <laughs> that podcast. So I'm like, everywhere I'd go, Spence was like, yo, I got this I got this, uh, this deal under contract. I'm like, I talked to that guy four months ago. Just yeah. Get the hell out, Spence. That's all right, <laughs> The um, so with your process, do you do um, VAs or what's your like uh, lead generation source? How do you go about it? Uh, yeah, so it's like a crazy stuff, but I've never paid for like pulling owner data. Yeah. Same, I, I haven't. I, uh, I do manual research. Yeah, hundred percent yeah. manual. Um, That's why they have more money than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always just done manual. Oh, you seem to be doing pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, everything's manual. Like yeah. I call and text from my cell phone number. Yeah. We don't use any nothing mass. Yeah. Like the only thing that's like mass sent is like my newsletter. Yeah. And that's like not to sellers. Yeah, you just so. do that like every now and then just yeah. to update people, yeah. Um so yeah, it's uh we just look them up. It's it's as crazy as like again what, like what's your uh, research tools? If you don't mind sharing. <laughs> Google. Yeah. I mean it's, it's it sounds crazy, but like if it's like, hey, we wanna buy just say uh, Jade's going to I don't know, any city in Iowa. Like we let's try and maximize the trip there, yeah. and we'll like use yeah. it. Like, hey, Super we're smart. yeah, we yeah. already manage a park there. Yeah, or so you'll, you'll go hit the seven owners. Yeah, it's so Google, yeah. and we'll just go on Google, street view it. Most parks have a sign. Yeah, and just call the number right on the sign. Yeah, yeah. and we just use like, hey, we have other parks in Iowa. Yeah, uh, my main guy, he's yep. actually going to be in town. Yeah. Um, there's so many kind of ways in the door. Hundred yeah. percent. Hey, like our plumber um, isn't really doing the best anymore. Winter's coming. We know we're going to have some leaks. Like, who do you guys yep. use? Yep. Just any kind of foot in and the I guess door. there's a lot of ways for you to connect with the owners. The commonality. Mm. Yeah, commonality. 100%. Your nearby owner. And then you offer other services other than just, I want to buy your park. So, like, they're inclined to share who the owner is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Dude, yeah, commonality lowers the barrier to entry so much. And, and yeah. as a wholesaler, even as, like, a broker... Anybody that's doing acquisitions. Again, like for Jimmy, for example, I, okay, I know he owns parks in Tampa. Okay, so I own parks in Tampa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they don't yeah, know. They, they don't, they're they not going to ask. Know, like, yo, my partner they is this know. guy. Yeah, yeah, it's really easy Dude, to you represent yourself. Sometimes as an owner. I use Derek's, hey, I got 38 Love parks, yeah. 2,000 units, mainly in the Carolinas and yeah. Florida. Um, you know, we just closed on three parks in Pensacola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're in Pensacola. Yeah. It's think, like, yeah. Yeah, and, my, dude, yeah. My, yeah, my favorite broker's line is I have a client that just closed a property nearby yours. I'm like, one of my clients bought something near your park. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, guys, like, don't fucking yeah. be like, I'm so and so with Sand Dollar. Like, don't fucking be like that. Yeah, don't name drop. But like, no, don't name drop. Don't do any of that. Or honestly, but it's like, fucking name drop. But, but <laughs> honestly, if they, if they tell you yes, they want to sell, guess what? You got to leave. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, matter yeah. how well, you get them. But just, then send it to the fucking guy yeah. who actually owns there. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, or just call him back next week with a different name. <laughs> and then, and then, but then, yeah, once you close a deal, it's like, yeah. you know, like close one in Mar you know, the first deal in Mariana. It's like, yeah, yeah, I just closed a deal in uh, Mariana. It's like I'm calling up in the you know panhandle. It's like, oh yeah, I know where, I know where Mariana is. Yeah. And it's like, even though you only closed the one deal, you can still use it as a. And, and I think like a lot of people leverage. do. They try and like exaggerate. When I said like, I build the relationships with the sellers, it's genuine. Yeah. yeah. And I think like when I tell them like because I'll have people call all the, every day, yeah. get cold calls, and sometimes I take them. Oh yeah, we own some other stuff in the area. So what cities? Yeah. And you, they don't know. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so like when I do it, if it's like yeah, you're like I own this park in this side of town, right off 17th Street. Yeah. yeah. So if it's like calling here, I would say like yeah, we have a park in Newport Richie. Yeah, we yeah. have a park in Miami, and yeah. like yeah, this one's 42 sides. You almost want to be like annoying and how much like you're oversharing. Yeah. Because being on the other end of it, because I make yeah, you calls want, you and I get them. Yeah. yeah. And I the bad calls are bad. Yeah. Like and then it's like you ask, well, my boss said I'm like not at liberty to disclose yeah, yeah. that. It's, it's like, like oh, you're a okay. fucking bullshit yeah, cold yeah, caller. Yeah, 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 you're some bullshit cold yourself. caller. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's I think you want to like over like yeah. overshare to where it's like yeah. you feel like awkward for how yeah. much you're like sharing. And yeah, then, and then for yeah for newer guys, like one thing that they could do, and this is something that I do on the the broker side. I'm telling the new guys, if you can't represent that you did sales in the area mm. or you know closed. Look up as much as you can about price per pad in the area, the most mm. recent transaction. Because if you call a seller saying, hey, I want to give you a call. Um, I'm working with a lot of buyers looking for mobile home parks. Right now, something recently traded at 45000 a site yeah. right down the street from you. A lot of my clients would be interested in paying around the same price. Mm -hmm. You instantly, if they say, yeah, they're interested, you know that they're willing to consider 45 a site. Yeah. And boom, boom, boom. On the first call, you already got yeah. price, intention, interest. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. you want to look up to, especially for the park side of it, like, hey, 
Um, yeah, I looked up a lot of times. People yeah. will try and like make up like how they came into the park. Like they know you're you're cold calling. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be like, hey, because they'll even ask, how'd you get my yeah. info? Like, hey, I called the number on the sign. Yeah. It didn't. It rang the manager. Then I looked up the owner and I saw that you own a restaurant. Yeah. Like so, I I will be like very. Radio. Yeah, yeah. You remember like really lying to them. Yeah. I think like a lot of people are like, oh, just say anything. Yeah. Just say like. Yeah. Make something up, and yeah. I'm like, I think when you are genuine with them, it, yeah. it really does. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it really does pay dividends. They could tell. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I know it because I get so many of the bad ones, yeah. and I could tell the few guys who like are genuine. Like, hey, I know you're probably not a seller. Yeah, I don't have anything in the area. We have one small park in Nebraska, but we really do want to buy in you know Missouri. Yeah. So I think those are the ones that really stand out. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. um, how much do you spend a month in marketing currently? <laughs> oh, okay, it went up a lot answer. lately. Yeah. Uh, and marketing and then you know staff and the vas yeah, yeah. uh probably like 12 grand a month holy shit you're sinking real money into it yeah i'm sinking, wow. a lot. I'm sinking yeah. everything into it you know it's it's but you you can recapture that quick in the resi like 30 you're days saying. yeah 30 it's 45 a days game. you know yeah, what i mean yeah. so it's a different game and that's yeah, why one I'm, deal a month and yeah one deal a month it covers uh not a little bit more so yeah. you know in the amount yeah, don't I'm, sell them short bro Come yeah, on. yeah. One deal a month, 22, 22. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and, it, and it's <laughs> two deals a month <laughs> yeah yeah well no and, yeah. and that's the thing it's it's all every every decision i made is based on somebody else doing it better than i have yeah so you know i'm in the coaching session with these guys and they're saying okay with the cold calls you should be getting about an eight to nine X return on that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I went from spending, I tested it out. Like, yeah. okay, I'm going to spend three grand a month on ads or, you know, marketing and, oh shit, I made, I made 27 back. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it matched. Okay. All right. So I'm taking 27 for the next three. Okay. So you know, to now keep put, 12, put more money. In so now it. I should be making a yeah. hundred yeah. a month. And, and I think the ROI is so high. Like, especially if I spend twelve a month, so you yeah. spend thirty six grand a quarter yeah. on marketing, but one thirty six k deal, done. And you, yeah, your whole quarter's done, covered. Yeah. yeah. So it's like oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, when, and again with 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 the that's why it's finding the right mentorship and coaching is important yeah. for this kind of stuff. And it's like finding people that actually do it. Yeah. And not just, you know, coach it. It's hard to find coaching in the mobile home park space. I'll say that. <laughs> you know. So like, so like the metrics like that, dude. There's no one that's pushing metrics for like mark because you, you know, can't. Yeah, you know, and but there is, there is. It's just much harder. And the problem is, this is another thing with the commercial. That's a problem. Most people who go into middleman and commercial deals. They're not long term middleman. They do three or four deals, build up capital, and go to the buy side. Mm -hmm. So there's not like lifelong wholesalers with a sellable wholesale company in commercial because no. it's like once you make like two three hundred grand, no. they're usually like. Right, I think it, I do think it is kind of impossible to replicate that with parks though, because like yeah. you guys had said, there's motivation. <laughs> If he calls a hundred people, yeah. somebody in there's moving, yeah. getting divorced, yeah, yeah, had, had they're having kids and they need a bigger house, yeah. With parks though, yeah, yeah there's just not that. So it's a hundred relationships that you have to build, yeah. yeah. Not like kind of being able to get like, hey, we have to sell this I, house. I, yeah. I literally sign offers mm. over a forty-five minute phone call, yeah. same mm. day, yeah. It's so on it's the phone, so yeah. hey, by park. the way, I'm mm. sending you this offer right now. Check yeah. your phone. Did you get it? Okay, tap twice and yeah. sign at the bottom. Yeah. Commercial so don't get it's like literally one day. Yeah, commercials like all right, we agree on a price verbally, and then an LOI, then they want to change on the terms, and then we finally get the first draft of the contract a month later, and then they take two weeks then for they their said attorney to get back. There's fifty occupied, but there's yeah. forty. Well, there's 40 <laughs> and then they're lying about the lot rents the entire time. Oh, and then oh, their yeah, profit shit. loss statement, they're net negative on it because they wrote off their vacation drain home field collapsed. Yeah, <laughs> drain, drain field collapsed. They <laughs> forgot to mention that yeah, these these seven homes on those two septic tanks have been backing up for right, years. I forgot to tell you about the pedophiles in yeah. the park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, we have we have nine violations. <laughs> The six condemned homes, and, <laughs> right. and we yeah. can't and we can't close before those are cleared yeah. up. And yeah. I haven't renewed my business license in three years. years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if I will say the one thing that I do miss about the park business, which is funny, is you talked about the LOI. Yeah. Go, okay. Like, hey, I'm gonna get you LOI today. And that was my whole thing. Uh, yeah. LOI a day keeps yeah, yeah. debt collectors. I, I've away. never sent yeah. an LOI. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, LOIs are so no. Stupid. Neither do I. No, it's but, like and uh, and and listen. As a broker, all oh, we love LOIs. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. You are getting them. Yeah. And, and I still I'll, I'll like I'll send them in LOIs and stuff just to. But what that does is it. It's some confirmation. It of, buys me time to dispo the yeah, fucking that, thing. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I'm not sending a yeah. fucking contract because I don't want to yeah. put five grand AMD down. Yeah, my <laughs> attorney's working on the contract. Oh, he's out of town for two weeks. I'll send yeah. you an LOI. Just sign it. It's not I'm binding I'm too scared. Anyways. I want to get the deal, like, locked up. Yeah. See, yeah. if you're an operator who would just you, take it down well, with you're your the buyer. Money. That's different, you know, for bro. me, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm not actually buying this thing. So, like... I need time, you know, because I don't want yeah. that due diligence period to start when I sign the contract. I'm yeah. waiting for that buyer to sign it so then they have that proper due diligence time. And that's one thing with the park business that's tough is like, okay, 
I know like we need 45 day due diligence. So if I sign the contract today and I can't assign it for two, three weeks, that buyer only has 14 days for due diligence. And, and like, I'm not yeah. going to spend money on due diligence. So that's why yeah. we're in like residential. It's, it kind of sucks sometimes because it's like I, I'll do a deal. The same conversation. I'm on the phone. It's like, okay, great. Oh, shit. Oh, open escrow tomorrow. It's like, fuck, I got yeah. 20 days to fucking ditch this thing. Yeah. Like, you know, but the dude, there's no due diligence period. Yeah. It's like, hey, walk the property. Good. Yeah. Dude, that's, you know. that's the problem with the, especially a lot of times when wholesalers bring me a deal and they're like, hey, can you help me move this? I'm like, I'll look at a deal. I'm like, yeah, it's a sellable deal. I think we can move it. And they're saying there's, there's 20 Four days, days left. Yeah. No, yeah. No, there's no, like, no, uh, yeah. we had to close Don't. in 60 days. I'm like, this is a sellable, sellable deal, but it'll still it'll take, take two months, months to find a buyer. Yeah. It's not it's yeah. not like Resi where you make because let's say this guy is the buyer, but he is his capital is committed to another deal. He's yeah. not gonna buy it for another sixty days. Yeah. Your your time you can't, so like it it's really not conducive to that. No. Well, I think that's why so many people I feel like it was very big <clears throat> last year, and I'm sure you saw it, both of you guys saw it too. Yeah. So many like new park wholesalers. Yeah. And there was like just random guys calling and then yeah, there was like companies and then they just come and they go. Cause yeah. I, I do think people like almost immediately realize yeah. like Oh my god! I got to talk to a thousand parks to even have one. Now yeah. I have to go there. Yeah, then you got to spend yeah. money. You got to put yeah. the one percent of a two million dollar deal is a way different game than one percent of a two hundred thousand yeah. dollar deal yeah. for EMD. Yeah. And then in, in, Re in Resi, I feel you can get away with like, ah, I'll do a five hundred dollar EMD. Like, no. they don't care. Hundred, hundred. Yeah, they don't give yeah. a shit. Right? I can like five deals right now, five hundred yeah. bucks. They don't yeah. even know. Any EMD. Yeah, in commercial, they're like, especially if you're doing a bigger deal, like a five million dollar deal with a somewhat sophisticated guy. They're like, if you're not putting up fifty k, they're like. What, what do you mean? But as a seller, though, like I, I see. I see why. Yeah. No, 100%. I agree with it. Yeah. If someone sends me some shit where it's like 5K AMD, I'm like, I'm not even going to present this, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? You don't have 5K? Yeah. You can't even order a survey. Like, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. I just, yeah. It, we, yeah. In circling back to that, I, I, yeah, I just, I, it, it's, it's hard. But if yeah. I'm wholesaling a park or commercial property, like I am not signing a damn contract until I know who my buyer is. Yeah. And I, I have, you know, three or four, yeah. text them. All thumbs down. I'm letting the deal just go. Not even I don't even let the deal. I don't even, I, yeah. you know, unless like that one and that one deal I was kind of working on, you know, I was talking yeah. to you about. It's like, I just really want to help these people. Yeah. You know, like sell it. Yeah, you know, we built yeah, that relationship, it, yeah. you know, um, which they decided they want to hold off and stuff. But like, if I have a, you know, and again, from that podcast, I've had a lot of people be like, oh, hey, man, send me stuff, send me stuff. If they're talking about all this shit, and it's like, oh, man, like, what about this? What about this? What about that? What yeah, about that? I'm like, I'm like, if you can throw yeah. that on that 15K EMD, and you have a 60 day due diligence period, yeah. you'll find all this out. Yeah, dude. But, but yeah, like, every, if you're every, not gonna do that, no, we're not doing this shit. Yeah, I, there's so many people that reach out on deals and like, I wanna tell them, like, I try and tell them politely, but then they think I'm being a dick, which I can't end up being a dick sometimes. I'm like, I just tell them, like, you don't know what you're like. If you can't tell me a ballpark price you wanna pay off what the lot you, rents are, you know, you're not a buyer. You are, yeah. If here's the rents, here's the utilities. If you can't just give me a ballpark if you're in the range of this pricing, you need to know all this other shit. You're not an actual buyer for this. No. Cause and even, this is, I gotta run it through my analyzer. All, all this dumb yeah, shit. I'm like, it's dude, like, do quick math. You, you should know the price per pad of this area. Cause you know, let's say you don't even know the current operations, you know the price per pad you could get it to because if it's a $700 lot rent market, you could probably get it to 60 a pad. Yeah. Reasonably. So that means if, if something's priced at 50 a pad, you're either a buyer for it or not. Yeah. I mean, and every, every buyer that I work with, and that's why, again, it's, it's like I just, yeah. I, I, I'm going to do my 10 to 20 a year and, and that's it. Yeah. Um, it's every buyer I have, you know, it's like, that works. Dude, there's people listening and be like, he's saying 10 to 20 a year and that's it. Fucking dick. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I, and who knows if I actually... If Someone's listening like, I only did two this year. Well, that's that's an accomplishment. But they, so, someone just knocks out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just lost seven viewers. But, right, but, but, <laughs> fuck. I didn't mean it like that. But no, I guess, no, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm no, but you, like, because residential, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do 20 a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. and that's a real number, yeah. you know, and then 30, 20, 30, 50. There's a guy that does 100 deals a month in fucking yeah. in, in Arizona, you know, and it's like he spends a million dollars a month there, in marketing. Arizona is such a hotbed for resi wholesalers. Well, it's just because it's, you know, it's, it's just good, good Arizona. Yeah, I guess yeah. a lot of people got there during the crash. And it's, and it's easy to make a spread when it's a growing market. It's exactly. Like if you overpay for something, but it's appreciated, it kind of saves Yeah, like Jacksonville's yeah. tough, but like, you know, I'm going to be in Orlando and Tampa and things like that. And so yeah. whatever. But, you know, uh, you know, let's just say, yeah, I do the, you know, the 10 to 20, but like, yeah, every but person that I know in my Rolodex or contacts, I can send them the deal. They'll tell me right now, yes or no. And yeah. if they say no, letting it to go. And they'll be able to tell me yes without needing to know the fucking, the whole story of it. They'll just, yeah. you know, they know from because they're buyers. They're actually buyers. Yeah. So like, it might be great, but then he's not gonna have his park stories. Yeah, the, yeah. the crazy tenants, and he might mess a couple things when yeah. you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this this is a good transition too. So I wanted to kind of talk about. Mm. Um, because we're both middlemaning deals from different sides. Mm. He's wholesale, brokerage, same shit, ultimately. 
And you're definitely, I'd say, would you say most of your time's actual operations by side? A lot no. of the deals now are like referrals yeah. and a seller's front. So yeah, definitely much more operations. Um, benefit of buying versus brokering. So I'm of the opinion, call me crazy, but I think there's so much more money in brokering as of now as a young guy. Mm -hmm. Because every deal I look at, especially now, if it was four or five years ago, that I would have bought shit at that pricing. Mm -hmm. But like now it's hard for me to justify going to the buy side. Like a lot of people ask me, why don't you own parks? But I'm like, I could put 50K to so much higher returns in the next six months. Mm -hmm. Let's say hiring someone or getting VAs or more marketing mm -hmm. spend versus if I bought this park and sure if I made 100% IRR in a year and a half, that's only a hundred grand. I could have turned that fifty k into a hundred grand. Literally, it's it just like a different mindset, yeah, a different just stage of life. Yeah, and yeah I mean, in the beginning, I was like, yeah, just deal, 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 and yeah. I still am. But now it's like, hey, I want to have like the study. I have a huge yeah. payroll. Yeah. I have to pay everybody. Yeah. Like, and it's just there is like the peace of mind too. Yeah. But like, yeah, we have our management. But I guess you're also yeah. different too because you know how to optimize the value add, quick value add. Yeah, like, and you know how to identify that versus. Yeah, like, and I think like from my end, it's like in the operations, there's like a lot more ways for like everybody to eat. Yeah. So like we can buy a park, my brother's there, hey, yeah. we've got to trash out 10 homes. Yeah. He's making money on that. Now Jade's and he's selling homes. Yeah. Now we're operating it long term. And yeah. This so has a lot more different avenues of yeah, and like, revenue. Um, yeah, of yeah. our management fee, like we're gonna do a 50-50 split because yeah. I'm gonna oversee, but Jade's gonna, you know, kind of run it. Yeah. So I think there's like, for me, it was just like a good transition to like a more of like a long term, yeah. just more stable. Stable, one hundred percent. And yeah. what about you? Are you looking at going to buy a site anytime soon? I know you're dabbling with the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, set, yeah. No, I mean, unless I have a park in my lap that's making that's like, oh, this is a crazy. Well, and, I, and it's yeah. and it's somebody like I can be like, hey, Jimmy, let's just go in this together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fucking talk to a tenant. I don't yeah. want to deal with the tenant. I'll that's put the money. Like, I'll I'm put like, the money yeah, up I, because and and again, that's just because I'm. I'm trying to build a company. Yeah. So Same. my my whole aspiration yeah. is my equity is from my company yeah. that I eventually will sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be. And then when I sell that, then when I'm 40, I'm going to take all that money and dump it into a real estate. In conservation mode, to have somebody know. manage it for me and have the cash flow. Yeah. Because I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to. You know. But I get a lot more excitement and thrill out of um, <clears> building my business. And, yeah. and and I think that that's just. I had to pick. Yeah. Right. I had to make a decision, and I made this decision. I even yeah. have a lot of deals now that were like guys that bought stuff from me six years ago, five years ago. They're like, hey, I'm going to pass on this one. I yeah. would have bought this yeah. four or five years. I mean, these things are. I mean, they take a toll. Mm -hmm. And I mean, once somebody's gone through a rough turnaround where a tenant's threatening to kill you yeah. and you're evicting him for the 18th time. Like, it, uh, it, it breaks a man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, they, they threaten to kill me. They, they just, they, all they know is a voice. They don't right. actually, you know. Yeah. Now, so a lot of these guys are like, hey, man, like, I would have bought that five years ago, but now it's like, you're no, like, it, I, yeah. I just don't, it's not worth it. Yeah. You your, can I use your lighter real quick? Yeah. It's, it's either, mm -hmm. like, a, yeah, like I said, it's, it's either, it's, you got to pick your lane, and uh, I understand completely where, mm -hmm. where you decided, I mean, if that was the lane, I, yeah, of course, mm. you, get the equ you get the equity, you get the cash flow, you get the management fees. Like, it makes total sense, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I think as a wholesaler, I think you need to decide, like, are you going to build, a, like, an actual, like, company out of it? Um, or are you going to, like, take the equity asset ownership management approach, you know, like mm. Jimmy did? And I think you'd make that decision. Yeah. I think it's very difficult to do both because... Like my day, I'm I'm on the phone eight nine hours a day yeah, trying you, to find more deals. You're only optimizing for one or the yeah, other. I yeah, I can't. Yeah, you can't great. optimize exactly. For both. I don't unless I, you're Jimmy, you can optimize for both. Yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right, right. Exactly. And 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 you know, and we've talked about you know that moving forward, you know, but mm -hmm. it's it's yeah, unless I have a great deal, it's in my backyard, or yeah. or I know mm -hmm. that it's like a solid deal, it's great seller financing terms. Like I I'm gonna own it 100, percent or I'm gonna go in it with a partner that I yeah. really trust. And mm. no, yeah, that can handle the operations like Jimmy. Yeah. I, I won't do. I won't. I won't touch real estate for now. Um, yeah, because yeah. again, oh, if I have to put a quarter million down, I can put that quarter million back into my company. You make so much, but yeah, you make ten x in six. Well, months. not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, I, I could fucking fumble the bag and, and fuck it up, but it's I just I just side. don't want to have too many things spread out. That's yeah. that's the biggest mistake I made in the ten years my my first ten years of career yeah. is is I had too I was trying to do too much shit like, mm. and that's yeah. where I really am like I'm I'm spreading myself too thin. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm so. in similar boat as you. I'm like, until I take over majority of the market share, there's no point in not reinvesting in the biz. Yeah. But the problem is, I don't know if the I'm still on the fence whether mobile home park brokerage could be like a sellable business. It, I think I'm will, so, will, somewhat onto something, will, but that's will, something will, we should will, talk about. 
we'll, we'll make talk it. about yeah, the brokerage yeah, yeah, yeah. idea. We, 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 we can come together on something, and I think yeah. we're going to make... I, I have an idea how... Because I've seen it before so many times, yeah. and then we can talk about this off camera. Yeah, because I, I know multifamily... I have a lot of, int- a lot of thoughts. Yeah, there, there's multifamily brokerages, like like uh, one-off multifamily shops that are like five-man teams, and then they sold that off to like a bigger CBRE or mm-hmm. Marcus yeah. Chat. My idea with the MHP value is like if I get to like a five- to ten-man team, theoretic, and we control like... 20% of the market share of MHP transactions. Maybe mm. I could sell that to like a Marcus and Millichap. But yeah, well, I don't, it's not as systemizable. So I'm learning with these two guys that yeah. I brought on. I have it systemized for the lead gen. Mm-hmm. The dispo still isn't systemized. I have it to an extent. Mm-hmm. But once you get in the weeds of negotiating mm-hmm. offers, it's so specialized with the language. And like this seller, like we know how to say lot rents, park on homes, whatever. But then like, I'm training my guy who's talking to someone and she calls her units business owned units and doesn't refer to them as lot renters, but like I have like my land tenants. So like he has to be able to dissect that language as dumb as that sounds. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, oh, it's not that Ma'am, systemizable. Meanwhile, use fucking English. Yeah, yeah use English. Do you English. own the unit or does the tenant own yeah, the unit? Yeah, it's like, just tell us. And then, but like in multifamily, it's very simple. Like, okay, you have a one bedroom that rents for this, a two bedroom rents for that. Mm. But in the mobile yeah. home parks, you have two types of income and then. You have yeah, it's so complex. It's so, yeah. yeah, it's it's like that that extra that park and home lot rent separation because the park and home had its own specialization. Was well, it a seventies home, an eighties home, a nineties home? Is it a brand new home? All right, is it a double wide? Can the lots fit double wides? Or yeah. there's there setback problems. There's I a lot just of- think I just think there's probably just still just like not enough of them. And like for you guys, like if you could visit every park owner in person, like for me, I know like I would yeah. do a lot better if we could see every park. Like, Hey, let's, yeah. let's want to sit in your office and talk about it. It's just impossible though. Yeah. Like we can get on a plane and yeah, it's go too much money meet to go 50. Yeah. That's why I've gotten away from doing, uh, uh, site visits and property owner meetings only because I'd like to, mm. and my closer would be so much higher. But the problem is like, it's not scalable. Yeah. yeah. Like I can't afford to just send out, all right, my guy, Josh, I'm going to pay, Four, three grand between flights, rental cars. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll pay three grand for you to go there. Jimmy's like, yeah, I know that. Yeah. No, uh, I'll, I'll pay three grand for you to go there and not get the listing. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I remember my yeah. first year. I didn't, right. have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have enough money for a hotel, rental car, anything. So, like, yeah. yeah, like, I remember I got in the car, drove to Alabama, yeah. and it was it was up there. So, it's like a nine, ten hour drive. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to go there in the morning and then drive back at night. Yeah. I'm like, I, it was like a 50, 60 side park. It was yeah. like a walk. So I show up there and the guy's like, hey, you know, you know, man to man, another kind of just southern, you know, good guy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man to man. I wanted to let you know uh, my college buddy, my best friend, he uh, he lost his job. Um, I'm seller financing in the park. Damn. Yeah. And zero, you went, zero down. Yeah. And I'm like, I just drove 20 hours. Dude, I'm like, man, I've flown out so many times where I'm like, I got seven different property owner meetings. And then the person I'm going to list the park for, I'm going to meet them all. I'm going to make mm. this a great trip. Yeah. Five out of the seven didn't respond. Yep. The person who I was supposed to get the listing signed by didn't mm. respond. Yep. And then they called me later after I already flew out to the next state. And I'm like, yep. I just wasted three grand. Yeah. <laughs> and I Dude. actually only yeah. met one property owner that wasn't even on the schedule. Yeah. I've, I've <laughs> put, Who's not selling for seven no, years? Yeah. <laughs> we just put, bought it. Yeah. <laughs> I put maybe I put 3,000 miles on my car this last year. Yeah. 2,000 of them were coming to see you and do this podcast. Yeah. I do not leave the fucking house. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. going to do this deal over the phone and we're not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's and just, it's so, it's so much like, I think it's just, that's the model though. Like, Hey, you're getting those and like, yeah, we're getting the ones who are like, we're going to go see in person. Yeah. I think yeah. like uh, every seller, like a lot of them don't want to meet. They want to yeah. sell to you. Yeah. Like, well, and to be honest with yeah. you, I mean, I think a lot of the problems that I have brought upon Jimmy have been because of that, because you know, it's, it's a phone relationship and yeah. you know, and I've made his life, very stressful the last year. Uh, <laughs> we've we've so got a lot of them done. How, <laughs> we close, gotta, how close are you guys working in connection with each other now? Like how daily? Talking daily, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, dude, it's how the how the relationship kind of start? Just a random deal, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 random deal. And then what was um, it like? Your cold calling, kind of laying it off to him, or like what's the? I think it was just, it was just easy. Like, there's just so many people who like make it so complicated, oh, yeah. and I think like we did kind of head it off right off the bat, where it's like. Tell Spencer, like, hey, this is kind of what's going on. I'm, like, very upfront, like, hey, yeah. like, the buyer's a little shaky, and, yeah, he knows, like, the structure. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, hey, buddy, like, I'm going to be a 20% owner in this, but I'm not bringing any of the money. The person bringing the money is, like, they're on the funds. The park looks, like, shut. I think we just, like, got it. Yeah. And, like, yeah. there's some people who are, like, you know, pestering me, like, every day, like, 10, 15. 
hey, did you sign? Did you sign it? Did you sign it? Like, I think we've just got, like, how it works. It's just, like, yeah, yeah, I understand how he operates. I understand that he has a shit ton of sh- stuff to do. Yeah. And all I need, like, literally, it was super funny because I would text him details of a deal. <laughs> Response. Thumbs up emoji, thumbs down emoji, like, you yeah, know, puke emoji. Right. Like, yeah. you know, it's, and, that's, and that's what I know. Okay, he likes this one. He doesn't like that. You know, that's all I need. I don't need a you fucking. You just don't need a lot. Yeah. I don't need I don't need three paragraphs. And I yeah. know if he says thumbs up, we're going to get it done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to stress out about him signing fucking contract, contract, contract. Oh, hey, did you get this? And did you do this? Did you do this? No, I'm going to sign it myself. Yeah. yeah if, I throw on the, yeah. if I have to throw on the EMD, I'll throw on the fucking EMD. We'll figure it out later. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I know that he'll get it done. So yeah, dude, no, and I was like on vacation one time, so sponsored the EMD, and it's just like just being easy. Like everybody, like if you're buying, you want to be an easy buyer. If you're yeah. selling, you want to be an easy seller, and we're kind of both. Yeah. So it's just like yeah, just making it easy. Yeah, just cool. making it easy, and and if you're a wholesaler, making it easy for the person that's and gonna end up writing the check. Like, yeah. who do you think the fuck you are to be like pestering <laughs> this man? Yeah. Or or any buyer that has a huge portfolio that has a bunch of shit to do. Like, figure it out yourself. You yeah. have to sign the contract. It's a you're signing the contract. Yeah. Sign it yourself and assign yeah. it. Like, assign the. That's the whole point of a wholesaling. You just yeah. sign the yeah. contract yourself. Yeah. And yeah, if 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 you know, I remember the one day. Yeah, we had the EMD was due, and it was like, "Yo, dude, I'm in the plane. Like, I'm in a plane right now. Like, or something, or a vacation. I'm like, dude, no problem. It's fucking. If you can't write a check for five grand, like, you're probably stepping out of your comfort zone too early. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? And borrow it if you have to. Like he did from his grandma. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Like. Yeah. But if you're the wholesaler yeah. and you put no skin in the game and you're not willing yeah. to like. Be, get out in there and, and you know I think that's yeah. a great point that like when in the beginning with me I think like we were able to get a lot of stuff closed because people were like I don't want to go there yeah. but I want to meet the city I want to get a feel for it mm-hmm. so I'm like we'll go yeah. so I think like mm-hmm. a lot of wholesalers like I have the deal they don't want to do anything on yeah. it yeah, my value the is the yeah. deal but we've always been like no like we're doing everything yeah like we, I, I don't even want them to get we get the phase one yeah. we get the insurance like I want it to just be so easy mm-hmm. yeah and I think uh, it's so important, especially yeah. for like people who are getting into wholesaling. Yeah, yeah, just make it easy as possible for the buyer. Yeah. Like their whole job, like, and that's the thing that really opened my eyes. It's like they have a full time job, communicating with investors, communicating with you know the people that they're bringing the money from. Mm-hmm. They yeah. don't have time for all this other stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, how can you make that easier for them? Yeah. Right, and that's what I do for you know Jimmy and a couple other buyers. It's like I don't necessarily do the phase ones or any of that, mm-hmm. but I'm like I make sure everything is teed up. Ready yeah. to fucking go. I know what they want, and they all are different. Yeah, but like that's why I don't have a hundred buyers. Yeah, you, you like and that's why I want to entertain a hundred. And, and I've always said, like, I want when people talk about like, don't Sandor. call me. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, no. don't fucking call me. <laughs> no, like I'm, when I've when people talk about Sandler, I want it to be like I don't know one of our tenants' names. Yeah. I don't know the manager's name. I don't. I don't know anything. Like, yeah. they are handling all of it. Yeah, and it's so easy and it's so good. So then they tell their friends. Then they tell their mm-hmm. friends. Yeah, and it's the same with the sellers. Like, hey, here's the list. I don't want to pester you for 30 days in due diligence. Like, let's sit down, carve out five hours, and, like, let's go through all the docs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't have it, like, let's just know now. Yeah. So just really try to just make it, like, as easy as possible. Because yeah. nobody wants to be, like, the pestering, like, yeah. annoying. And yeah. I think, yeah, just being and easy. Just be blowing him up all the fucking time. I mean, he's yeah. got 100 calls already coming from other shit going on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just be transparent is, I think, the most important thing, too. Like, hey, yeah. yo, Jimmy. They don't have shit for docs. Yeah. Like, just tell them up front. Like, don't, yeah. you know, like, I, I, I got an idea verbally of what's going yeah. on, but, like, I this, they don't have anything. Yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah, mom and pop. That's a really good advice, too, for uh, wholesalers. And this is a comment that I have for, like, wholesalers I've collabed with that don't do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do this on the brokerage side, and it sounds like you guys do this, mm-hmm. obviously. If you know what everyone's due diligence list is, start compiling that from the seller and make a checklist what they have and don't have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a fucking bare bones thing that yeah. so many wholesalers, they come to me at the deal and I'm like, do you know if they have an old survey? Do they have an actual profit loss? And they're yeah. like, I haven't asked yet. I'm like, what do you mean you have it under contract? And, and you we put like all yet? of our like, stuff, like we have a property folder. Yeah, it's you make like, a nice, it, yeah. easy file, file vault. Here's everything. Here's yeah, label it's all the folders. same. It'd yeah. be like same thing. Florida, Tampa, yeah. 25 units. Yeah. And then in their survey, yeah. run roll. Easy yeah, but some of these guys, yeah. they'll send just, they're sending screenshots, yeah. copy and paste text. I'm like, it just at least organize yeah. it. But then they want a $200,000 fee. Dude, so I'm like, like, like uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> a, cert, a certain wholesaler that I've collabed with um, who's sloppy and always on the Facebook groups, he like doesn't organize <laughs> anything. And I'm like, how do you expect a buyer to want to buy this from you if you don't even clean up the dude's rent roll? Like, I can't even dissect the rent roll that you sent me, and, like, you're telling me to look at this? I don't even want to spend the time to dissect it. No, and that's why, like, yeah, we've done so much yeah. repeat business because we've made it, like, with the same buyers, we've made yeah. it so easy. It's so easy for them to say yes, no. Where it's almost yeah. like it's it's so quick. It's, like, yeah. uncomfortable. Like, here's yeah. everything. 
And like we don't really and they're just spending three million dollars a drop of a hat. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, like last year. <laughs> How I was dare doing... you not spend it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we we're doing like one like advertising sheet a month last year. Whereas yeah. I wanted to like, you know, remain like, hey, yeah. we're still, you know, active. active. Yeah. Yeah. We're not really doing it anymore. But then like we do like a 40 page. Yeah, shoot. You, you basically so you're the first wholesaler that I've seen that basically you do an OM, like a proper OM mm. for a wholesale deal. Yeah, and then clean we, rent roll where you just have your spreadsheet. Here's lot one rent, lot two rent, mm, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, because yeah, the, the seller probably sent you some shitty handwritten fucking. Yeah, so garbage. that takes yeah. like weeks to put together. And people yeah. have been like, "Why do you do all that? Isn't it better just to, to talk to a bunch of people?" I'm like, "No," because nah, if I send out that advertising sheet, yeah, even some of the bus deals that we made the most money on, I got like two, three, four calls on it. Yeah, they're like, "Well, that's terrible. You should be getting a hundred, two hundred. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I want only people that they even, when they call, there's nothing that they have to ask me. Yeah. They just want to know more of like the story. How'd you meet this guy? Yeah. yeah. We're just talking shop, but there's no, well, how many this, how many that? Like they know yeah. everything. Yeah. And that's why I think it's wholesalers aren't doing that now. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, 807. Closing thoughts, guys. Oh, damn. We went long. Yeah. No, this is perfect. This is actually perfect timing because. How about you lead us off, host? <laughs> no, nah, let's see. Let's see. What do you guys like to do for fun? Anything fun? What's your favorite hobby? Fishing? Yeah, I love doing the fishing tournaments. Yeah. Uh, it's my favorite thing. What's your favorite hobby? Cold calling? <laughs> dialers? No, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cigars. Cigars. Cigars, cigars, cigars and yeah, dialers. Tobacco. A, a shit ton of nicotine and yeah, dialers. Nicotine and caffeine because yeah. protein. No. <laughs> yeah. um, really, honestly, dude, the, the, the coolest thing for me right now is my son. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, dude. Um, having kids also you know, awesome. eight, you know, 18 months old, growing yeah. like a crazy playing ball with him in the yard like yeah. watching him learn and grow it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me really professionally yeah. too so you know and then obviously i will say we're in a crucial time yeah. in america right now make sure you vote um really nervous about that and once you have kids you'll really understand yeah. like how big of a picture like how yeah. important it is politically yeah who's running our country yeah so i do want to note that as well you're telling me you don't want your son to become a transgender they <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> who lives on ebt and i will kill doesn't work anyone you don't want him to be a w2 slave worker <laughs> mother hey man dude uh, next podcast next yeah. podcast but like dude for real i mean it's 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 a joke what's yeah. going on in our country the last yeah. four years um you know what they're trying to propose now with the new real estate taxes and yeah. such. Just do any, just have common sense and you, you, you know what we should just be doing. Just want you guys to know he's a huge Kamala Harris supporter. He loves Waltz. That's his favorite guy. <sighs> oh, <God. Yeah>. Tampon <laughs> Tim. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, yeah. like, hey, anyways, guys, thank you yeah. for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe as always. I haven't been posting a lot of podcasts recently. I'm just too many deals. This social media it's shit, honestly. Like, yeah. yeah. The uh, Spencer, what's the best way they can get in touch with you? Or just yeah. follow you. Yeah, yeah. Spencer R. Davidson on Instagram. Uh, again, I'm aggressively hiring, uh, you know, people who really want to get into the space on the residential side. I'm growing my team. So, you know, if you're a former athlete, former military, that's my preference. Uh, I want people that are have yeah, know, how, driven, know how to yeah. work, results yeah. driven, and uh, want to make six figures a year. Because yeah. that is a that is a true thing mm -hmm. in my business. I know Jimmy does. It's like everybody who works for him. It's like goals make six figures, life changing mm -hmm. money. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm not trying to be greedy. I want to help everybody. Yeah. Um. I'm not going to coach you or mentor you or start a coaching program. I want you to come work with me, yeah. and we can build something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jimmy. Uh, that would be uh yeah on Instagram at Florida yeah. Jimmy or uh, via email uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Johnson dot co so not dot com. If any of you are his tenants and want to curse them out, that's how you reach. Them. <laughs> <laughs> they sell it. Yeah. Yeah. They, if they get the cell phone number. They have five bucks do a they? pop. Really? Wow. Yeah, we had that happen before. Wow, dude. Yeah, one of them got it from like they called the city. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, we're dying out here. Yeah. And then the city doesn't know what to do. They're yeah. like, look on like the water application. Yeah. Here's his phone number, and then that person sells it. Dude, we got to do a we got to do a, a podcast uh, specifically dedicated to like comical stories of us getting just reamed on the phones or you oh. dealing with tenants. The, just, the tenant stories, dude, I can't. Uh, uh, yeah. truly. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm sure. making a book. book. Oh. I was gonna say you gotta write a book. Yeah. 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 Anyways, guys, Later. thank you for coming on the show. Oh, yeah, thank you. We'll definitely do this again soon. Yeah. So for sure. Up. All right, peace. <laughs>